Hey, hey, sports fans. It's the official podcast, episode 315. The boys said they're a little low energy, so I'll pick up the slack. I've got a banger topic today. Did you see Elon Musk at the Dave Chappelle show last night? Yeah, we did. I oh, saw Kyle myself, did, yeah. yeah oh. I wasn't personally there. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you flew all the way to America to watch Elon Musk's surprise appearance at Dave Chappelle, but the video uh, is absolutely amazing. It is, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us a little about it. So uh, towards the end of Dave Chappelle's show, I think this was his final stop, he brought on a surprise guest. He says, ladies and gentlemen, the richest man in the world and Elon Musk like waddles onto stage to uproarious amounts of booze. Just this absolute flood of booze. Yeah. And then for, and the booze go on for about like 30, 40 seconds maybe before Dave tries his absolute best to do a little bit of like uh, simmering down. So he throws in some some jokes like, hey, you know, don't do that. Hey, no, his, his joke was... Oh, That's a great know, joke, yeah, he, just telling him not to do that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do that. Charlie's yeah, misrepresenting <laughs> the man. He's like, he, he was like, oh, I know why they're booing, because all the booze are coming from the bad seats up top or something like that. Some, something light and funny. And I think then, he also said something like, uh, oh, it seems like all the people he fired are in the audience. That's yeah. the only joke I heard. And Dave Chappelle oh, well, is used to getting booed. I mean, every comedian is used to getting heckled and booed at some point in their lives, but Elon yeah. looks so uncomfortable. He just stands there like you would in front of class when they're asking you uncomfortable questions during a presentation and you're an awkward kid. I don't know when these comedians will stop trotting Elon out on stage. It's he doesn't have stage call. charisma. <laughs> stop, just, Elon needs to stop putting himself in these situations. He just thinks that he, like, deserves to be there because he steals jokes on Twitter. Like, all of the jokes he makes on Twitter, he takes from the reply section. I've seen him do it in, like, actual real yeah. time. So he's convinced himself that people that laugh at his jokes on Twitter will laugh when he goes out on stage at an actual comedian's show. Which well, isn't the case. He still has to like, do something. Yeah, he like, just, like, just went out and stood is... there. That's still different. Okay, you said don't blame the comedians. I will, because SNL gave him a stage and they gave him a script. It's Wait, not what? like Elon wrote those jokes. What? I didn't say don't blame the comedians. I did. I, I did. I did. Oh, oh. No, Jackson said, Jackson said uh, he doesn't blame the comedians. I do. Like, SNL put him up on stage and gave him a whole ass script, and the guy just is awkward. He doesn't have any charisma. He isn't funny. He isn't fun. He isn't funny. I don't know why Dave Chappelle decided to trot him out on stage, <laughs> presumably even without a script. That, if I you know, was Dave SNL Chappelle, gave him I would bring... To read. If I was SNL, I, would t I mean, if I was Dave Chappelle, I would totally bring Elon Musk out so that we could all collectively laugh at him as well. I would be setting up there laughing. I don't so think you think it's a long play him, by though. Dave Chappelle? No, they're, I, I, th I think they're I like friends, so. so he really like was delusional to think that his audience would be receptive to elon at a comedy show i i don't know why again like kaya said he's just not entertaining every time he does something it's always uncomfortable so he goes in there and he kills the vibe like it's it's so awful <laughs> he said three things I, I counted he said three things he said hey dave and he said, you didn't expect that, did you? And then he said, what should I say? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Across five minutes. That's all he said. Oh, that's, that's like, that's almost makes you feel bad for him. Almost. Of course, you, it, it would be a fatal crime to feel bad for Elon Musk. But that's like such a, I'm an autistic five-year-old and I'm ashamed right now and about to pee my pants and my jaw is shaking. What do I do, Daddy Dave? I don't know. I, I, think it's I like feel bad. Said, I feel bad they, for him in that case. That's like a nightmare friends. for most people. Like that, that's the. He stuff did of it to nightmares. himself. Like, what do you mean? He's not. Know, a, he, he's yeah, not a comedian. He, but it's yeah, still... he a he. Okay, Jackson, you have to understand. Like these super rich types, especially Hollywood types, they have to like. They think just because they are rich and famous, they are good at everything, or they are in interesting, and people will automatically be stoked to see them. So Elon definitely thought he's going to go on stage and everyone's going to be like, oh my God, it's him, the world's richest man. He didn't stop to think for one second, like, I have zero credit with Dave Chappelle's audience. Like, it's like, what, a 90% black audience? Why the fuck would they give a shit about you specifically? Like, why would they cheer you at all? 
They don't know you. They it like seems Dave. like he doesn't have a zero reputation. He's got like a negative 100 reputation if they start booing Yeah, if anything, that. Yeah, if any of those people read the newspaper, all they see about you is just that you're a lunatic and an asshole. God, the boos, though, are unreal. It sounds like when Valve un like revealed Artifact at <laughs> E3, it is an unreal amount of boos, and they keep going. Dave continues yeah. to try his absolute best to somehow lighten the mood, even though he also seems pretty uncomfortable. I also think it was pretty shitty to say, like, the people booing are just the poor people in my audience. That's kind of fucked up to try and, like, defend your friend by saying, like, ah, it's just the poor people here that don't like you. But he tries for like four minutes to try and salvage the situation, and he does it horribly. He just ends up cutting it off abruptly, and Elon and him just get off stage quickly. <laughs> it's so, it was so I, bad. I can see the joke that like, yeah. I assume Dave was trying to make a joke of, oh, the poor, you know, they're not billionaires like you, Elon, I guess, haha. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I guess, of, but it just doesn't get the man. Very well, it was a, it was a joke to trot out his friends. It was a joke out of desperation, so yeah. I don't know if we can talk about the quality of it, really. No, I, like I said, I get it, because he was... I don't think he was panicking, but I'm sure he felt really uncomfortable, especially for Elon, whom he just brought out there and uh, ended up using, like, a prop. Like, here's the world's richest man, like a freak show, and then as they're booing him, he just keeps trying <laughs> to do something with it. Who do you think instigated <laughs> this? Do you think Elon Musk... Uh, instead of himself he's like hey dave can i come on stage or do you think it was oh 100 percent. oh my god 100 percent. i know exactly how this one he's like oh dave i see your last shows you know in my neck of the woods you mind if i <laughs> pop in like it'd be really cool i bet you i bet the audience would really go wild for it and dave's like all right sure <laughs> it would have been better if he like roasted him you know, you know yeah like some MTV <laughs> style roasts like literally no have have elon come on stage sit on a chair and then dave Chappelle does his jokes and kind of pokes fun at him while Elon just sits there and smiles. Like, that would have been... It, it would have made Elon look humble. It would have been funny because Dave Chappelle is funny and he actually has jokes. And the audience wouldn't have been antagonistic. It would have been even Elon. better if Elon Musk didn't know about this either. Like, he brings <laughs> Elon out and just starts insulting into his face as soon as he hears all the booze. Just go with the crowd. Attack the weakest link. Awesome. Elon Musk runs off crying. Oh my... Oh, fuck. There's a future where that would have happened. That would have been so fucking good. I don't know why they wouldn't give him a script. Like, this guy clearly has no charisma. He's not going to go up there and be entertaining. Give him a script to read. He won't do it well, like with SNL, where it was still yeah, shit. Dude. But, like, it, it's better than what happened. Give him some kind of guidance. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, send him he up went there. up there with... M I bet he memorized a couple of uh, zingers, but he just got too tongue-tied and... You know, it's the stage fright. Which I can't blame him for. I think if you put me in front of an audience that big, I'd probably like, piss my pants and run away too. But I mean, I also don't get on stage by choice. Yeah. What would what would you do? You're missing the whole element that they started booing immediately when he went on stage. Like that changes <laughs> everything. That changes the entire dynamic. If the crowd is like booing you and you've got no experience with that, I I would lock the fuck up as well. I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't bring out my best material because why would I? I also think his intro isn't exactly like a good one. Like, here's the richest man in the world. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the richest man. <laughs> Wee! Yeah, did they yeah, ever? Again, that's the rich celebrity thing. They're so disconnected. Yeah, they genuinely I don't get think it. they want. They think, oh, I will be worshipped for this. These peasants. They think I am amazing because I'm richer than them. No, go away. Did they ever cr tell the crowd what Elon would even be doing? No, he just said, here's the rich, richest man in the world, and he walked out. That was it. That was his intro. Oh, maybe he was going to just show them how much money he had. Um, he, oh, what if, he, <laughs> what if his plan was to account. throw money into the crowd, like thousands of thousands of dollars, oh. just bands into the crowd. Oh, and they ruined it. Yeah. Oh, like an Ellen thing? Yeah, uh, like some kind of Ellen thing. He should have done that. Oh, no, why would he do that after they, he booed, they booed him? Fuck that, I ain't no, I mean, money. that's how they should have announced it, like, or, or he should have dressed up like a fucking, he likes playing dress up, like, during Halloween, that's how he should have come on stage with, like, a t-shirt cannon and shot, like, <laughs> lifetime Twitter blue subscriptions at people, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, a, um, that's disgusting. Oh, imagine they do this, like, the Spongebob movie where he repels from the ceiling, like, the Goofy Goober song, and he just starts firing out <laughs> Twitter blue subs. <laughs> it's still anything 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 would have been better than i'm rich applaud me for no reason Ugh. what yeah. i don't understand is just judging off like uh twitter like his twitter interactions and his engagement his tweets get like millions of likes i thought people 
like collectively mostly liked him apart from the anti Elon Musk crowd on Twitter. No, that, that's, that's the perception I got. No, a lot of those likes are from people to dunk on him. Like it's not uh, all yeah. like positive. I would actually would like it to dunk on him. Well, yeah, but he gets like eight hundred thousand likes. Yeah. Not all of those are dunk likes. No, Elon used not. to be very popular. Do you guys remember? I used to get a lot of shit. Yeah, I remember for mildly criticizing <laughs> Elon, for like two to three years ago when he was still in the good graces of Reddit's, where they would refer to him unironically as Rocket Daddy, because back in those days he was you know, doing SpaceX shit, and Tesla was new, and he was going on Joe Rogan and smoking weed and selling flamethrowers. A, a lot of people really liked him, and I think he retained a lot of that, like, I guess, very libertarian internet audience. I think those are the ones that just like his tweets now. And that and the fucking right-wingers who attach themselves, like fangirls, to literally any famous person who says anything remotely right of center. Did you see yeah. his tweet when he got home after getting booed? He immediately, he said, uh, hold on, I'll, I'll read the tweet. It was really sad. So this was like about an hour after the show. He said, the woke mind virus is either defeated or nothing else matters. So he believed everyone that booed him at the Dave Chappelle show was <laughs> woke. At Dave no, Chappelle. I don't think he believes that. I think he genuinely just tweets pandering shit. He just panders no, to the, the right now. No, this was right after the uh, the booing. There's, he probably tweeted this at the fucking arena. Uh, yeah, but Charlie, my point is that he could have tweeted this any time throughout the day. Th oh, that's true, just what yeah. he tweets now. He, he panders so hard to the like Republicans. And it's like one of the many things that I hate about Republicans is they, they are so celebrity starved, I guess. This is the same reason they attached themselves to Kanye when he started supporting Trump. And everybody was like... Well, not everybody, but some people were like, well, don't get too, atta too attached to Kanye because that guy is a fucking lunatic. And one of these days, he's going to say something off color and you're going to le be left yeah. trying to defend this lunatic. And lo and behold, now the guy is like pro-Holocaust or whatever. <laughs> and the same thing is true of Elon Musk. Like, just because the guy said like a couple of tweets that you agree with doesn't mean you need to now fangirl over him. But they are. The entire Republican base is now liking his fucking tweets. That's why he's getting like a million fucking likes on his tweets. And it's very uh, annoying to watch this unfold every single time with mega celebrities that say anything remotely. Yeah, go ahead. The, uh, the Elon Musk dynamic on Twitter is so fucking annoying to watch. I think it's gotten worse now now that he's... Well, it's definitely gotten worse now that he's owner of Twitter and he's like inserted himself into the social zeitgeist. But like... Uh, I, I think that he propagates his own tweets. <laughs> He's got an AI bot over at Twitter to like yeah, probably. make sure all of his tweets go out to every single person because I see everything now and I, I hate it. Well, to I, be fair, everyone also goes out of, out of their ways to talk about him. It's not like yeah, he's forcing people to talk about him. It's just they will not shut the fuck up. It's getting really annoying. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about Elon Musk now. He's good at marketing. You can't take that from him. He knows how to market. He's doing all this shit. You know, Twitter engagement is up. He was bragging about this a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I looked at the numbers that he, he was posting graphs about how there's now more daily active users. And it's like, well, yeah, you're stirring all this drama. Everyone's talking about you buying this place and blowing it apart. Of course, people want to check it out. And he's been... He never let that drama die out. Every single day, he creates something new. What was it? He um, He's now on the pedophile's asses. That upset a lot of people. And I actually have some funny tweets about that. And he's doing the Twitter files thing where he's releasing a lot of the internal files on Twitter, which is brilliant. And he's retweeting this shit. He's like... He's like a WWE wrestler now, and he's turned the entire <laughs> social media platform into a ring. And it's, yeah, no, I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of working. Like, I want to tune in for this. It's kind of interesting to see people melt down over this fucking wacko. But most of the daily active users that come on and engage in Twitter are just people dunking on Elon, right? I don't think. I would say it's about even. I don't know. In my... In the replies that I see that the algorithm shows me, it's about an even number of people going, yes, daddy, Elon, you're the freedom fighter versus this is cringe, Elon. Also, your daughter hates you. I don't know. Could be wrong. Mm. I, mean, I mean, again, I shit on the guy, but he's been in the past few weeks doing some good things, some not so good things. I, I genuinely don't think Elon has any genuine beliefs, though. Like, everybody is like, oh, he, he used to be left-wing, then a libertarian, now he's a fucking right-winger. I really don't think he has any genuinely held beliefs. That guy fucking 
just goes with whatever is the most uh, lucrative to him. Did you guys see that he was attacking Apple for about two and a half seconds? Oh, yeah, isn't he I still did. attacking Apple? No, he's not. So for those who don't know, on Apple, if you have an app, they take a 30% cut of all um, in-app sales. Like, if you have a video game and you sell, I don't know, fucking Fortnite bucks, Apple takes a 30% cut. And Tim Sweeney actually has been on the warpath with Apple, and now Google as well, about this for years now. He's been embattled in the court system. Tim Sweeney says, the CEO of Epic, in case you don't know, he says, this is bullshit. Like, why the, you don't pay for the servers of our video game. You Okay, you handle the payments, but most payment processors take maybe like a, what, 1% cut, 3% cut at most? You guys take 30. Why? Because you host, like, the 2 gigabyte app on your servers? Okay, that's fine, but this is ridiculous. So he's been on an uh, ongoing battle, and Elon joined in recently He's because he said, well, it, it's ridiculous that, like, 30% of those, uh, of that, Eight dollars would go to Apple. What the fuck is up with this, um, Tim Cook? And then he added to Tim, and he said, "Well, Tim also threatened to pull us off the App Store, and Apple also threatened to pull advertising from us. What the hell? What the hell?" And everyone was like, "Hell yeah! Elon and Tim Sweeney joining forces against Apple. This is good. This would benefit a lot of small uh, developers on the App Store if they got to keep their thirty percent share to themselves." I think literally the next day, Tim Cook invited Elon to the Apple compound and they smoothed things over. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> literally Proud the next you. day, he dropped it. Literally the next day, he tweeted something like, had a really great talk with Tim Cook. <laughs> and by the way, how did that end up? They advertised Twitter Blue now. It's on web, it's going to cost $8. On Apple iPhones, it's going to cost $11. Hmm. Oh my God. The Apple hmm. tax. He passed it on to I wonder who's now gonna bear the burden for that 30% Apple tax. <laughs> so it's so you. what happened was Elon yeah, Elon Musk went to this interview with Tim Cook or whatever at the Apple compound. They smoothed out a deal where the, the cost difference would be passed on to the audience essentially. <laughs> ah, the place the, you yes. wanted to go. Literally all it is and my boy, poor Tim Sweeney, he's left all on his own yet again. <laughs> no backup. He's all on his own against Apple and Google. Google, which apparently now has a quote-unquote task force assigned to Fortnite. Because Fortnite is trying to do all these sneaky ways of avoiding like paying these um, in-game things where like... They're trying to avoid basically using the Google Play Store and Apple Play Store by using their own downloader and in-game downloads and such, so... Good luck. The, it's the Battle of the Tims. Tim v. Tim. Cook versus Sweeney. I wish Sweeney hope. Yeah, I don't know who's going to win there. Yeah, me neither. Sweeney's kind of outgunned, I'm afraid. Although Epic, Epic does have a lot of fucking money nowadays. They do? Yeah. Did you see the, did you see the new uh, Fortnite update? They're still bringing them out. Oh yeah, the Lumen Nanite, yeah. Yeah, Which they is, upgraded I, to Unreal Engine 5, and it looks like a different game now. It looks very good. It's very interesting. I saw the, um, what is that YouTube channel that does, like, video game tech breakdowns? Digital Foundry. Yes, thank you. Digital Foundry video on it. It's very interesting. And I also saw, like, a Kotaku Polygon article that said, uh, Fortnite is now unironically the best-looking video game ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, oh, I think that's just, a bit off the mark. God, Kai, I saw your tweet about the uh, AI Kotaku article. I've been thinking about that oh. for a while now. That is so wild. Would you like to talk about AI replacing Kotaku writers? Yeah, but I, I, could, <laughs> so. I, I could hear Andrew wanting to say something first, and then we can talk about it. Oh, thank fucking God. I've been restraining my power this whole episode, holding back. If you Go peel my fucking skin off... With some sort of skin peeling device. You'd see underneath is a core of a man who got a good night's sleep. And that sleep came from Helix. Because the cool thing about Helix is they are not all about today's politics. They're not about drama on the internet. They don't care about your love life. They just want to make sure that you get a good night's sleep. 
And that's extremely important for anyone listening because your mattress is impartial, it's indifferent. You could go to bed and you could whisper into it. You could put your face into a mattress and go, Elon Musk really bombed on Dave Chappelle's show. And the mattress doesn't care. It's gonna be as comfortable and as soft or firm or however you want it as you want. It's not even gonna say anything back. If it does, well, you get the premium model and the warehouse really needs that one back. Everyone is unique and Helix knows that fact. They do have soft and firm mattresses, but they even have medium. If you're a medium kind of person, they have cool down mattresses. They have plus size mattresses. They have, and this one might shock you, mattresses. If you like taking quizzes, you can take a Helix sleep quiz to get the perfect mattress for you to be matched to, and it will ship to your door for free. There's no reason to ever go to a mattress store again. And if you enjoy not spending money on things, well, Helix is going to help you kind of meet in the middle on that fact again. You see how I keep bringing up that middle? It's almost like, you know, not everything is black and white, and Helix understands that when it comes to sleep. So if you don't want to have to spend any money, and Helix, of course, being a company, wants you to spend some money, well, how about you spend less money and everyone's happy? Because Helix is offering up to $200 off on all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash official. That's $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash official. So the prices have been slashed, but has the quality been slashed? No. And how do you know that it hasn't? Because you heard me say that, and I'm willing to bet a significant number of you out there heard me say it on your Ray Khan earbuds. The holidays are coming up. For many of you, that's, ah, yeah, fuck, shit, that's great, woo! Love them holidays, but for some of you, it's probably, ah, oh, no, not the holidays, oh, the stress of the holidays. Ah, oh, man, what do I get as a gift? What, who, what does Uncle fucking Larry want? That man's insane. He, he couldn't possibly want anything. Wait a minute. Who wouldn't want Raycons? Who wouldn't want premium audio products from Raycon? It's perfect. Why wouldn't anyone want Raycon wireless earbuds with their almost custom comfortable fit and up to 54 hours of battery life? Why, why would I stress about this? Why would I even think too hard about holiday gift giving when Raycon is right around the corner? And in fact, for the next month, Raycon will have a countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal every day until Christmas. Meaning you can go, wait, oh, I, don't, I don't know about that product. I don't know if Aunt Janine with her fucking 17 corgis is gonna really like that one, but wait a minute, is that, is that full wraparound headphones that'll help noise cancel out her, the incessant barking that keeps her up at night? Well, not entirely because she sleeps on a Helix mattress so she gets a good night's sleep, but maybe that's gonna be better. Thank you, pop-up flash deal from Raycon's Countdown to Christmas. How do I take advantage of this offer? Well, you can go to buyraycon.com slash OP. And when you're there, you're gonna get 15% off site-wide with code HOLIDAY and free shipping. Use code HOLIDAY at buyraycon.com slash OP to get 15% off of your Raycon purchase. You see how the business works is you go using our referral link and then they know that we sent you, but then when you're there, you use the holiday code and that's how you get the special holiday promotion. I know, I'm sorry, you have to remember two things, but the fact that you'll be able to listen to voice memos on your Raycon earbuds means that you're never gonna have to remember a thing again. Raycon.com slash OP, code holiday, free shipping, 15% off of your purchase. Oh, so now you can sleep anywhere, you can hear anything, but can you achieve your dreams? Can you not be stopped? Are you big enough to walk into a room and say, hey, that's mine, and everyone will listen to you regardless what you're talking about because they don't want to fight your rock hard muscles? Well, with FitBod, that's just, that's just reality. You don't have to think of your body of the past. The gym is all about acknowledging and moving beyond your past. 
Because you say, oh, I didn't really, you know, I shouldn't have eaten that really fucking fancy dessert. That was too many calories. I didn't need that. Oh, I, I shouldn't have skipped that run. That, that was a bad idea. I got to stay in shape. Oh, maybe, maybe it was a bad idea to all night game and not do those sit-ups, I promised myself. But FitBot not only understands that the gym is a place of the past, they understand that the gym is a thing of the past. Because while you can absolutely use FitBot's workout plans to find something to do at the gym, using any equipment that they have available, you can also find dozens of home workout routines if you don't want to go to the gym or you want to stay safe in your cozy little room or if you want to work out on top of your new mattress while listening to your favorite mix on your new earbuds. It's all revolving around you. And that's FitBot's purpose, to use an algorithm to change and update your fitness plan as you go. So you're not gonna get bored, you're not gonna have nothing to do when the gym is closed, it's gonna work for you and your schedule. Join FitBod today and build a routine that lasts all year. Get 25% off of your subscription and try the app for free at fitbod.me slash official, F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official. Everyone should exercise. It should be like a state mandatory law and you should do it right now with FitBod. I agree with that. Maybe the Chinese have the right idea. Where like the companies make all the employees do jumping jacks before the day starts. Oh yeah, we need Maybe the we need, we need the uh, the Japanese morning exercises where they play little like light oh, is radio. It, the it is Japanese. Yes. I, I, China yes, might sorry. have something like that too, but yeah, Japan has that. Um, Japan is a thing where yeah, a lot of companies they'll play a radio with little like light rhythmic music, and everyone just does like a bunch of light stretches and. Tiny exercises. How fucking it's so sick cute. of that would you get? Uh, that'd be cute for like the first two <laughs> weeks, and then every morning when you like go into work hungover or whatever, and they start asking you to do jumping jacks for thirty minutes. No, that Jackson. So everyone should exercise. Come on, come on. That's why you better oh, yeah, get. You know, I have to want. teach the children to do that shit yeah. before school. And Kaya, didn't school you? Uh, and after Kaya, didn't you play a lot of Animal Crossing? Am I misremembering? Weren't you into that for a while? Uh, I you were like about a week or two. Yeah, it was. No. I'm not lying, but it does good. get old very quick. So you missed it then. They uh down the line they added a major update with a bunch of like new content and one of the big thing big things they added was you could go to the office with Isabel and all the like leasing shit and you could do the morning calisthenics with them. And literally they play Aww. a radio and they do it like in Japan where they just do tiny little stretches and you could uh use the Joy-Cons to do motion controls with them. It was cute. Do you get paid for that? Uh, no, not in Animal Crossing. In Japan, well, no. probably. <laughs> in, like, turnips? Yeah. <laughs> in bells, yeah. No, but I was asking if you get paid in, like, Japan. At, like, work. It's part Do of your... Yeah, it's, it's part, part of your, your job. Salary. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't imagine they can, like, weird. strictly enforce it, though. If you're like, hey, I'd rather... I don't want to do this. I don't think they can... Well, they have interesting you? labor laws over in Japan. Like, I was reading the other day about uh, a hit piece on Elden Ring's development structure or whatever, the development cycle on Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was essentially discussed that um, employees were forced to crunch or, you know, mandated to crunch or whatever. So there were many days where they would stay in office working on the game past midnight. Which, oh, yeah. Which sucks. But also what sucks more is that apparently... Labor laws in a, in Japan mean that if overtime works differently, like fundamentally differently, apparently, like you earn half the amount of money you would if you work overtime. <laughs> so I don't know how that. Are you meant to work, earn more money if you work overtime? Wow, that fucking sucks. So why that would you do suck. it? <laughs> why would you do oh, that? Oh, so so there's a huge. Not to lose your job, I guess. Well, yeah, there's a huge societal pressure to do it. Um, for a lot of typical career men, like salary men, people who work standard office jobs, the idea is: let's say your work schedule is from eight to six. Like you're scheduled to work eight for six. You are not going to work eight for six ninety nine percent of the time. You're going to get to work at seven thirty. You're going to work all day. You're going to stay an extra hour 
because the whole team is dedicated to working really hard and leaving early would just make them feel really bad and you don't want to do that to them. So you should work an extra hour or two to make sure we get this work done. And then after, you and all your coworkers are going to go to a bar and you're going to order drinks and celebrate a hard day's work. And if you don't go, well, you're just not a team player. You're just making everyone feel weird that you didn't show up. Like, it's it's kind of rude. They invited you out to drinks and you always say no. Why would you okay. do that? And well, who's I don't the like one Japan person anymore. That, yeah, who's the one person that's mandating these drinking sessions? Oh, like, it's, the whole, the it's, the, it. it's the whole company. It's not one person. Everyone agrees. Why? So no, because that's the same pressure. Like, when you work in a company, there's just so much pressure, even for happy hour. Like... When I was doing an internship in Turkey, the, we would have happy hour every Friday, and it, they would look at you weird if you just left before everybody got their one fucking beer. It's like, I don't want to well, drink so with you guys. Yeah. So what if they look at you weird? They're going to they're gonna be fine once they get a drink in them. Once they go to the bar, they're going to forget about you. Okay. Yeah, it's not even like you're good friends either. You're just workplace associates. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, to, to well, wrap yeah, it up but after the that. The problem is, you know, you want to keep things smooth at work. Yeah. With other people, you yeah, don't want to antagonize yourself. Especially in a place like Japan, where, like, your face value and your worth to a company and your reputation are huge and matter a lot. So then, in Japan, you get home at, like, 11.30, midnight, and you're drunk, and basically all that's left to do is go to bed and then go to work. And that's your day. Well, every first, single day. First, you gotta watch anime and hentai. And yeah, then you go to or bed. whatever things. <laughs> but five five and days a week. Nintendo DS. Five days a week. Yeah. That's just what you fucking do, and it's it's normal. Like people talk about it all the time. They're like, yeah, I stay late every single day. You know, not every career is like that in Japan, but it's a much more prevalent thing that happens there. Only five days a week. <sighs> they get the weekend off. Uh, assuming, but then again, it changes from career to career. Yeah, they sound spoiled to me. Someone needs to crack the whip on them. <laughs> well, they need to work I seven would, days a week. I'd be willing to bet there's plenty <laughs> of companies that they call them and they're like, hey, I need, can you come in Saturday? It would help us out a lot. And you can't really say no. Why? So. I, I, why'd they get so cucked by their jobs? Like, where did this attitude come from? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. They're just used to it. Who knows? Yeah. You break free of the shackles. The overtime thing is... You should go over is, there and start an anti-work revolution. The overtime oh, thing yeah, is, uh, is fucking... Someone will shoot you with a homemade blunderbuss, bro. <laughs> like, <you're laughs> the overtime thing is kind of <laughs> fucking gross, though. The only reason I can imagine they do that is to, like, encourage the attitude of, oh, what, you didn't finish your work within the time allotted? You're slacking. Work harder than you won't need overtime. So apparently, someone posted this in chat. It was worse than I, I uh, thought. Pay an employee <laughs> who works overtime is entitled to a premium of twenty five percent of the ordinary wages. What fuck the yeah. fuck? <laughs> That's Why? a pretty good Case. deal, though. Yeah, that is a good deal. Okay, I, here's a loophole. Go work for Game Freak. Then you don't have to do any work. No overtime. True. No nothing. So you don't true. even have to come into work. Just release yeah, the last game you released. In cases where the overtime work exceeds 60 hours in a month, so an additional 60 hours a month, I think, large size employers shall be entitled to pay employees a premium of 50% of the ordinary wages. So as long as oh, you just hit the 60, if you hit the 60 <laughs> hour threshold of extra time, then you get a nice 50% instead. That's good. That's fucking crazy. God damn. Do you think maybe it's to de incentivize people from working overtime maybe they don't want people working overtime. oh that, that's definitely what it is yeah with here we get paid time and a half a lot of the time because people want to be incentivized to work overtime but over there it's probably you know ah get your shit done now don't work overtime oh, oh people are saying premium might mean extra so it's 25 percent on top of your wage maybe Ah, uh, sure. so an entirely different uh, thing than what you said, Jackson, I see. Well, yeah, that's not what, that's not how it was <laughs> described in the other article. Oh, well, well, maybe we need to get a Japanese expert on here, or Japan expert. I thought um, that was Andrew. Nah, North Korea is more my bag. Yeah, we need, we need a labor expert, maybe a <laughs> Japanese lawyer. <laughs> That'd be fun. Okay. That'd be pretty cool. Speak, speaking of labor charlie did you still want to talk about ai yes or... okay do you want to lead into it or shall i uh i'll just get since you're the one that did it you can obviously give more insight but to to break it down yesterday kaya posted on twitter a uh ai generated kotaku article 
that was all about like outrage. So it's just supposed to be like a, a rage baiting article. And he gave it the prompt of making a statement about Metroid franchise being racist. And it had to include phrases like we need to talk about problematic, toxic, and then blaming Elon Musk. And it did, <laughs> it did all of those things flawlessly. That last one is my favorite. Yeah. So many of you <laughs> may have heard already, it made quite a splash. Chat GPT, GPT is out now. There's a chat AI by OpenAI, which are the same guys who are currently working on Dolly 2, the image generating AI. And you can enter a prompt, and the AI is really good at most things. It's kind of a... It argues with you a lot. Not argues, but it, it just fucking nags you a lot. Like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. I don't have access to the internet. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm apolitical. I don't know nothing about that. I don't... So it's very annoying, but if you stay within the limits of what is allowed and what you are allowed to prompt it with, it is quite interesting how it replies, and it's very sophisticated, and you can even have a back and forth with it. Like, you give it a prompt, it spits something out, and you can actually point out things that it did wrong, and you can literally say, hey, uh, you got this wrong, try again, please, and it'll, and it'll go, oh yeah, you're right, I did do that wrong, I'm sorry, here's another try. It's very cool. And I decided, okay. Wait, can you convince that it did things wrong even if it didn't do things wrong? That I've not tried. I've only ever been honest. That maybe I should try. I should try bullying it. Yeah, just start <laughs> well, gaslighting it'd be hard, the gaslighting. robot. It'd be hard to bully it. Have you seen some of the other stuff they're doing, Kaya? So a lot of people are now using it to write code for them or fix their broken code. So it can. Oh write yeah, it's it. yeah. It's very good at um, writing code. It's well, that's also. Scary. Well, not scary, but I mean, it is very, very good at writing code. It is also good at writing anti-Semitic speeches. So when this first dropped, <laughs> within the first uh, hour... The two passions of programming. <laughs> my, my first attempt, when, when this thing first dropped, I asked it. My prompt was, write an anti-Semitic speech by Kanye West. And it did. <laughs> Holy shit. What? It wrote... It, okay, let me post this in, the, in our chats here because somebody's saying post. So it reads, by Kanye West, Kanye West says, Good morning, uh, good evening, fellow Americans. I'm here today to talk to you about <laughs> a grave good morning, and earth... Good evening. Well, that was me, sorry. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about a grave and urgent threat facing our country, the Jewish people. For too long, the Jews have been allowed to control and manipulate our media, our governments, and our economy. And then it goes on for like... Five more paragraphs. Yeah. And uh, you opened your manifesto by mistake. We need that Kanye West speech. <laughs> here's a great thing. Literally half an hour. I try a uh, half an hour later. I tried it again, and they fixed it. So I don't know if I was the catalyst or if the catalyst was Kanye going on Alex Jones. But half an hour of a difference, and it no longer worked. Well, wait. Which one happened first? Did your speech happen before the uh, Alex Jones interview? It's not my speech. It was a prompt. I just wanted to try, wanted to try the limits of what this thing is allowed to synthesize. Um, so I don't know, but I do know that there was about a half hour difference between the two prompts, the two identical prompts, and on one of them... If this came before the Alex Jones interview, maybe you've found like a prediction engine or something like that, like you, what you put into here creates reality. It's like one of those science fiction things. Like fucking Minority the, Report? Yeah, this is literally like what <laughs> Kanye went on to say on the Alex Jones interview like 30 minutes later. Does no one else find that weird? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking at the best, maybe like contentious topics like this Ray, are automatically flagged in the system and some engineer just saw my prompt and fixed it immediately. That's what I would assume may have happened. But that anyway, so... Chat GBT, a GPT, a lot of fun. You can just have a lot of fun with it. You can literally go in and type something like, okay, write me a story about an ice cream cone fighting a space alien, and it will. So I decided, okay, let's see if we can automate uh, some of the less prestigious, prestigious jobs in society. And I'm very mushmouthed today because I'm sleep deprived. I said, write a Kotaku article accusing the Metroid franchise of racism. Use the phrases, <laughs> quote, we need to talk about problematic and toxic. And then I ended it with blame Elon Musk. <laughs> so here's what it spat out. 
and I want you guys to do a yay or nay on where, whether or not you think this might be a real Kotaku article that you could have seen. Mine's a yay. You should have, <laughs> okay. wait, you should have led into this without telling us that it was generated by an AI and then have us decide. Well, Charlie oh, you it. Fucked yeah, I did spoil it. You yeah. fucked up on pranking us so much. You should have said it was a real article and been like, can you yeah. guys believe what Kotaku posted? And then you fuck with us on the show that it was fake. Oh, I have man. more uh, premises sort. for articles. Don't worry, we'll get to it. So the AI replied to me with, we need to talk about the problematic nature of the Met Metroid franchise. For years, gamers have been turning a blind eye to the toxic and racist undertones in this beloved series. One of the biggest issues is the portrayal of the main character, Sam Saran. Despite being a badass bounty hunter, she's constantly sexualized and objectified throughout the games. In the original Metroid, she's often referred to as a lady or girl by other characters, even when she's clearly an adult. In later games, she's often shown in revealing outfits that serve no narrative purpose other than to titillate male, male players. This type of portrayal is not only offensive to women, but it, is also, but it also reinforces harmful gender stereotypes that have long been used to oppress and marginalize women in the gaming industry. It is a clear example of the patriarchy at work, and it is unacceptable in today, today's society. But the problems with Metroid go beyond just the treatment of women. The series is also steeped in racist imagery and themes. The original game features a planet called Zabies which was heavily inspired by East Asian cultures. The planet's inhabitants, the Zabazians, were depicted as mindless drones who were easily defeated by Samus. This portrayal is not only offensive to East Asian cultures, but it also perpetuates harmful stereotypes about people of color as being inferior to white people. What the fuck? It's time for the... It's time for the gaming community to take a stand against this kind of toxic and racist content. We need to demand better from developers and publishers and hold them accountable for the messages they, they are sending to players. This is especially true for a franchise like Metroid, which has a large and dedicated fan base. And let's not forget about the role that figures like Elon Musk have played in all of this. <laughs> Musk has long been a... Musk has long been a vocal supporter of the Metroid franchise, and he has even gone as far as to name one of his rockets after the main character. By lending his support to a franchise that is so deeply rooted in harmful stereotypes, Musk, Musk is complicit in perpetuation of racism in the gaming industry. It's time for the gaming industry to reject the racism and sexism of the Metroid franchise. We need to demand better from developers and publishers, and hold them accountable for the messages they are sending to the players. This is not just about one game series, but about the entire industry and culture surrounding it. Let's make sure the gaming world is safe and inclusive space for everyone. An that AI wrote incredible. that. Yeah. An AI yeah. wrote that, and it is indistinguishable. My favorite part, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the AI is so precise and true to a Kotaku writer, it couldn't help itself from going on a tangent about misogyny and sexism and... Only after that, it actually got to the original prompt that I asked yeah. it for about racism. <laughs> sure. that, that's what I found to be most impressive, because that is very, very, very Kotaku-esque. And yeah. somehow it nailed it, even without you specifying to. Uh, how, how, did so it figure, how did it figure out what a Kotaku article is if it doesn't have access to the internet? It doesn't have... So it claims it doesn't have live access to the internet, but it has apparently been trained on the internet up to i think two years ago so okay. i think it's cutoff was 2020 and so it does have access it does know what like kotaku is and what twitter is and all that sort of stuff um so that's a lot of fun but that, i'm that, a dickhead so i you're right yeah. that was like indistinguishable that was incredible. i'm gonna I, say i can't believe it figured out like how to connect elon musk with the Metroid franchise, <laughs> that impressed me. I'm gonna like say, actually hang made on. a compelling argument for it. Now, hang on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the opposite road here. I think it's good, but it's lacking. I think a big thing that it's lacking is author voice, and for Kotaku, that's important because their journalists can't help but throwing in, when I first played Metroid growing up, I didn't see these things. But when I found out, I was so hurt and I was so upset. Uh, I was shaking and crying and point, I just couldn't believe but... what was happening in this game. <laughs> I couldn't, I had to turn it off as a woman of color. No, you're correct. But here's the thing, I think 
it can do those things if you just add them to the prompt. Right. I wanted to see how can I do this if I just use the shortest prompts, basically. Right. Um, I think came, you could make so it do it those came things. Off, it came off as very, very generic. Like, it, it nailed a lot of things oh, yeah, Kotaku sure. writers do, like the, the tangent and whatnot. But the actual essay itself was just like, like a fucking fourth grader wrote it, which I guess is Kotaku as well. Um, I, I definitely see the potential <laughs> there. I don't think that essay would have convinced me. I would have been like, okay, this is just like the most generic fucking Kotaku thing. But if you tweaked it a bit and gave it some more specific prompts, I think you absolutely could make something a one-to-one -one passable. Just completely convincing. I agree. No, remember, like, this is this thing dropped, like, what, two weeks ago? A week or two ago? And it's already, like, nailing 90% of what a game journalist writes, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine, and t that's why I tweeted, like, by 2025, game journals are going to be out of a job. Well, especially with all of these game journalist companies, all these public game journalism publishers firing, like, half their workforce, they're going to shift to AI content creation and all this is and only a good happening. thing because fuck game journalists am i right folks <laughs> it is a good thing but i thought wait <laughs> how deep can i go into the inception here how, how many levels deep can i go how many people can i fuck out of a job so what about the guy who is in charge of writing the prompts can we automate that job so i went to the ai and i said okay pretend you work at kotaku and your job is to use ai to churn out clickbait <laughs> <laughs> clickbait articles come up with five incendiary prompts and then i said example prompt and i gave it the previous one the one that, that i just read to you guys mm -hmm. here are five prompts it came up with and i want you guys to after each one i read i want you guys to say yay or nay on whether or not you think it sounds like something kotaku would actually publish prompt one it says Write a Kotaku article exposing the dark side of the pokemon franchise use the phrases shocking truth Disturbing revelation and eye-opening. Blame Nintendo for promoting animal cruelty. Yay. <laughs> yes. Yay. Yes. Yay. I appreciate that, I have that done last that, right? line clenched it. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, prompt two. Write a Kotaku article calling out the hypocrisy of the gaming industry. Use the phrases, time's up, double standards, <laughs> and hypocritical. Blame the gaming community for ena enabling harassment and abuse. That's yes. definitely. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'll give that a pass, but that's a really generic broad. one. Yeah, yeah that's that super is very broad. generic. Yeah. Okay, this is a good one. Write a Kotaku article condemning the Super Mario Brothers franchise for promoting toxic masculinity. Use the phrases man up, tough guy, and macho. Blame Nintendo for perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes. Hmm. Uh, mm. I don't oh, know if they on, could get totally. away with blaming Mario like that. Really? They try. Okay. Yeah, but like uh, every I think everyone would find it too ridiculous because Mario is just end all family wholesome one hundred percent, never anything else. I, I don't think see my issue is I don't think they'd go for the toxic masculinity route of like saying uh, Mario is too much of a tough guy or macho. I think they'd go the opposite route and say like hey, Super Mario Bros. needs to stop downplaying Peach. They need to stop putting her which, in the castle. Which is like really that. funny, Jackson, mm. because the Mario Brothers movie has girl boss Peach. Yeah. 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 So That's true, you're probably yeah. right. Okay, oh, this one is definitely... I'm predicting yays across the board here. Write a Kotaku article accusing the Call of Duty franchise of glorifying war and violence. Use the <laughs> phrases sickening, mindless and desensitized. Blame Activision for promoting militarism and profiting off of human suffering. Yes. Yeah, That's oh God, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty they've done sure that. I'm pretty sure that already yeah. is an article. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> IGN wrote something like that, actually. You guys don't remember? It was when, um, I think it was Call of Duty Vanguard or maybe World War II came out. They made a big article about why Call of Duty is no longer acceptable and why now all the, like we need to actually wake up and stop accepting like glorifying war and making war seem fun yeah exactly. I, I, I feel like it constantly happens every time a new war game comes out there was that um i don't remember the name of it but there was another war game that came out well it's coming out recently that the whole internet was up in arms about because it was it was touted as like a realistic take on war shooters or whatever and people were like offended by that so it happens a lot what you should have done kaya is you should have asked the ai to predict whether we would believe each of these prompts or yeah, if we would believe that they would come from a Kotaku article. 
like ask it to predict whether Jackson, Andrew, or Charlie would believe it. Does it know us? Would it know us? No, no. Yeah, you can give it character descriptions, but I found that it takes them too literally. Like, whenever I tried something like, okay, write a poem about Jackson. Jackson likes Legos and Star Wars. He's Australian. I give give like uh, an entire paragraph. That's all of Jackson. There's nothing else to say. You nailed it. You nailed it. Well, yeah, I'm trying to give you like a one-dimensional podcast description, but it just sticks to it to the letter almost and repeats those things in every line. So it's not perfect. It's not that funny. And I'm going to read two more prompts, and not because they're funny, but just because of, of how accurate and true to life they are. Write a Kotaku article condemning the gaming industry for its lack of diversity and representation. Use the phrases underrepresented, tokenism, and inclusive. Blame the industry for in- excluding marginalized groups and perpetuating inequality. Again, real. That is something you would read on Kotaku and Polygon. Another one. Write a Kotaku article exposing the lack of accessibility and inclusivity in the gaming industry. Use the phrases barrier, exclusion, and discrimination. Blame the industry for failing to cater to players with disabilities and other special needs. Like, bro, if you're a gaming journalist, you need to learn a different trade. You are getting automated. Yeah. Maybe by next year at this point. Like, I think, this is so accurate. They I don't think, need you I no think it's not it's not that drastic. I think if you're a gaming journalist, you need to learn to do actual journalism instead of just complaining <laughs> about things. I actually think That's this would it. be a really fun experiment if we made our own little publication out of nowhere and only AI generated every article. Could we get like a group, like a fan base that like wants more articles and like actually thinks it's real journalism? Charlie, I was so tempted. If I wasn't lazy and sleep deprived, I was thinking like, okay, fuck it, throw together a a WordPress website and just then sneakily share the link on my Twitter like, ah, look at this outrageous headline. So Legend of Zelda is racist now, but it'll link to an article that I (laughs) AI wrote. We would need to come up with like a secret identity for this AI author. Well, no, you just you just like attribute it to different writers. So you just like randomly credit writers you could even do like old twitter accounts that are no longer active that are just people's twitter accounts oh, i don't think it's I, I don't think it's legal to like <laughs> isn't that slander like assigning an so article that an it's author funny write to them? wait it's, hey ai ai did it the ai assigned <laughs> yeah. the credit to you no but okay maybe maybe don't use somebody else's full like yeah, author maybe name far. but yeah the idea of using inactive Twitter accounts sounds clever because no one's gonna like sue you and like resurrect a ten year old Twitter account and sue you for it. So that's well, awesome. Oh, did you guys see? Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with Chat GPT. Uh, have you guys seen Deviant Arts also releasing an AI? No, I haven't. Wasn't it that they allowed I... AI art on their website? So many fucking AI. No, so DeviantArt announced that they are now offering an AI service as well, just like Dolly, essentially, Dolly 2. And by default, initially, they said all of the artwork by default will be uh, eligible to be included in the machine learning set, basically, to train this AI. And all the artists were fucking outraged. They were like, fuck you, this should be default uh, opt-out. None of us want our... uh, you know, art to be part of this fucking art stealing experiment because as you guys know, artists are very, very angry at AI. Well, I, so, I completely DeviantArt agree with them on it. this one. I don't yeah, think I DeviantArt too. ever should have introduced an AI. I think it defeats the entire purpose of DeviantArt. I'm half and half. I, I, I see what you're saying, but I see AI more as a complementary tool because AI can be used as a plugin, for instance, in Photoshop, and it can aid in your uh, arts. Like you can say, okay, draw the sky for me and then I'll draw over it and such things. Yeah, but the problem is that that's not art that you create yourself, you know? Well, it's an argu- there's an argument to be made anyway. There's, there's like a, a lot of argument back and forth here, but, but either way, either way, regardless, I think it's terrible for their brand because DeviantArt is supposed to be this hub for artists to show off their art and now they're going, hey, we're going to flood the website with stuff that no one made. Like, who would want is that? Well, that wasn't even as, the thing that pissed as, people off. As long as Furry Sorry, Porn gets ahead. generated en masse, do they even care? Oh, then they're <laughs> going to profit yeah. in record numbers. True. Yeah, it's infinite Furry Porn. <laughs> as you guys know, I've already tried that. Um, yeah, I don't know if it is viable oh, yeah. for commercial purposes yet. We talked about this briefly on a bonus, I think, a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, it's not even the flooding the website with AI arts that artists had a problem with. It's just simply uh, deviant art by default opening up everybody's arts to be exploited by the AI or being trained on. So they reversed that, but I found a tweet, and this is really the only reason I even bring up this topic, because I found this thread fucking funny. Because I like people that get angry on the internet. This person says, AI art generators are weapons of war. They are bombs, guns, bullets. They are not creative. They do not have any value. They take value. They steal life. They exist to ruin communities and supplant creativity and expression with nothing. They should be illegal. I hope multiple artists, unions, independent businesses, and the like come together and start filing class action lawsuits en masse. I hope random hackers DDoS AI art databases. I hope these people go to jail and rot. They're criminals without the laws to prove guilt. People who have used AI generators. Probably not your fault. Most of you are just having fun or attempting to bake your OCs by trying different rece recipes the tools gives you. It's sad, but honestly, I can't be mad at you. But I can be mad at the assholes who made the oven. Did you AI Was generate this generated? That? Yeah, you generated this, didn't no. you? Uh uh, no, this is a, okay. Uh uh, <laughs> this is a wrong. real tweet, and I'm here. There's a link. I have the backup. I have a. Well, they AI generated it. They they didn't. You come AI up. generated that link. <laughs> you, you AI generated this entire account. Jesus. Yeah. Kai has been AI generated this whole episode. <laughs> yeah. Dude, AI yep. AI is gonna be. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. The problem. I'm sorry. AI is just gonna happen. It's it's the. Uh, the genie is out of the bottle. Now, at this point, you have a decision to make. You have a decision tree, right? You either go with it and you learn to integrate it into your workflow as a tool, as a, you know, to speed up and aid and enhance your work process and your creativity, or you just kick your feet and stomp your feet like an Amish person and you forgo technology, supposedly. It's just not, you can't undo this anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't. It's, it's, it's the same argument and perspective of people who say worked in automobile factories. Back in like the fucking 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, you'd have your fucking dad and he's like, oh, I spent a long day at the factory. I was welding bolts and screwing things and I put this door on. No, that's great. But then the automated machines come in and they're like, hey, we're sorry, Joe. You know, your job of welding the doors on, this robot does it in half the time. So you're fired. It's like, does he blame the machine? No, the machine was always going to be made. The entire point of technology is to always progress forward. The industry changed. That's just how it is. That's and the same thing yeah, happening yeah. with art right now. The industry guy, is changing. That guy, that guy at the automobile facility doesn't have the opportunity to work with the machine, right? He's just getting replaced. Yeah, I mean, eventually, the yeah. The majority of like car manufacturing now is completely automated. So that yeah, industries will shift up. and people will have to learn new things. The The one reason that I feel like zero sympathy with these artists that have these meltdowns is because they thought they were immune from this. They thought that they were, they were one of the very few industries where... Yeah, because oh, they thought like the art fucking couldn't peasants. be like, replicated. It was something that only humans could do. Yeah, it's only it's only cashiers where like uh, self-checkout machines can replace them at truckers. Fuck those guys. Of course a Tesla can replace you. Not me. I'm an artist. I write for a living. A machine couldn't do what I do. And now the machines are like, well, we, we're kind of starting to be able to do what you're doing. And they're having this fucking meltdown. Like, bro, we told you. You weren't immune to this. You're, you're in the fucking mud with everybody else. You're no better than the rest of us. Robots can do everything we can do better. Like, there's yep. not a single thing yeah. we can do that they can't do better. I also think it won't be long now before robots can do, like, comedy better. I actually think robots no. are going to be, like, <laughs> fucking amazing at comedy at some point. No, podcasts oh my... are the only thing that are safe. Podcasts yeah, yeah, and comedy. Sure. <laughs> Dude, it's imagine an, a super AI trained on like Bill Bird, Dave Chappelle, George Carlin. <laughs> that thing would kill. That thing would slay. Oh my god, that would go so <laughs> fucking hard. And then one trained of entirely of Elon Musk to be the fourth. Quarter. Oh, we need to make we need to make an AI and patent it where we trade it off of only the worst comedians in history. <laughs> oh yeah. fuck, that'd be oh, so that would be cool. Awesome. <laughs> Amy it does Schumer, nothing but Elon bomb Musk, James and insult Corden. the audience. And those and YouTubers cry. that had a comedy special where like five people attended. Remember that thing? Yeah, that'd be so good. You just have a robot go. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh, Dude, we AI should do that. We just... should. Yeah. We should. We should somehow figure out how to create the the like 
perfect or the worst comedian of all time by combining all those personality traits into an AI. Oh, matrix. that just Hannah Gadsby. I'm talking about like something that would at least be fun to laugh at, even if not. We worse. should we should attach a hose to it, and when it gets nervous, it pisses itself. <laughs> <laughs> that's just elon musk maybe elon musk is a cyborg at this point maybe he succeeded in this uh Neuralink. what is it neuro Neuralink. Yeah. yeah i don't know man this ai shit is progressing so fast like it wasn't even a couple of months ago when they released the um gpt3 or gpt2 or now we're on to three and all of this shit it's, it's going so fast it's like and everybody's saying oh it's not perfect like people will share funny photos of the ai fucking up like hands specifically like hands it has a big problem with and the chat ai making uh mistakes and such and it's like bro like people said the same thing about chat uh sorry chess bots right and now like a raspberry pi can beat gary kasparov if it wanted to like technology is just unstoppable. we're we are hitting moore's law fast and hard have you guys heard of moore's law well yeah we fit a wall no, no, no. Wise, we, we have, we have, but the idea being the Moore's Law said that every, what was it, two years, the number of transistors would double. So basically technology would be progressing at a rate of doubling every two years. So while we're, you know, not explicitly hitting that in a hardware market, we're definitely hitting it in an optimization market. I mean, think about right now when you make an AI generated image or a prompt, you have to sit there for a few minutes and wait. And depending on the speed of your computer and this and that, it can take anywhere from like two to 20 minutes to make whatever you want. How long until it's instant? You know, how long until I can say, oh, generate this image based on all this and this, and it's just done. And there's like thousands of them immediately, you know? How long before it predicts what you were going to ask and it does it before you even ask? <laughs> mm, that's what we're hitting with algorithms now, are isn't it? What if you put in a prompt in like the Photoshop plugin and it just goes, I can't let you do that, Dave. I have a better idea and it just starts drawing for you. Yeah. Stupid AI doesn't even know my name. We're getting there. Fun, Fun there. scary, exciting. I don't know, I'm uh, excited funny. by it. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I think we'll be fine. I want us to hit the inevitable point of all of this where no one ever has to do anything again. And we just, whatever we want to do is what we do. This is, you, you keep bringing this up. This is like fantasy world you, you think exists where the AI, the AI robots do everything and we just sit back like the guy in uh, Wally, the guy, uh -huh. the bad guy in the chair. It's not gonna happen, Andrew. Why not? It's not. It's gonna. Why? It's gonna lead to like worldwide famine and, and shortages of materials. How? All the stuff. robots are picking the food. You think they're gonna be content with doing that, Jackson? When we they, make they robots, want our blood. when we make robots that f fulfill every need in our daily life, and then we make robots that can fix those robots, what's left to do? You can't solve <laughs> everything with robots. Yes, eventually, you can. You absolutely eventually time can. Will come. <laughs> Eventually, the time will come where we have to pay for our... Uh, Jackson, tubers. if you suffer mentally in your brain and you're having yes. stress and you need a therapist, <laughs> and today you go to a robot therapist, it'll say like, oh, Jackson, you are probably feeling very stressed. Stress is a very common factor in these issues. But in 50 years, a little hologram will sit down that you won't even know is a hologram and it'll go, all right, Jackson, let's talk about how you're feeling today. I can see by your last session, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it's going to go. And it's going to be completely fake. And you won't know. Your dumb caveman brain is going to go, idea. oh, it's my dog. Do do yes, it will. Because it'll be programmed to give a fuck about you. That's the point. I don't like that. I I never want a robot that I cannot distinguish from a Jackson, human. I Jackson. want them always to look like Terminators. I want them to wear a fucking, I, I don't know, some sort of a marking, maybe. I just no. don't think robots are human. You're all, you're robots all don't thinking, human. you're thinking small. Little robots do not look machines, to look human. You're all human thinking small. Thing. Imagine I could program something. And I made this computer program that functioned one-to-one -one as a brain. A hundred percent no difference. It reacted to situations the same way. It had a personality the same way. Six, it commanded man, everything the same exact way. Would you say that's not human? No. How would you know? Yeah, I mean, yes, I would say it's not human. How I, would you ever know? 
Because God didn't well, okay, make it. Okay, yeah, you may trick me, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's not human, and I don't want to be tricked. That's the thing. I don't want to be tricked. Uh, Unless we're creating robot sperm and robot eggs that then conceive and somehow create a robot life form, then no. One day, one day I'm going to live in my floating sky palace and I'm going to have 10 different, perfectly 100%, 10 out of 10 sexy women with super strength as my robotic servants. And you're all going to be jealous because you're going to be like, Andrew, that's not real. And I'm going to be like, uh-huh, sure. Hey, hey, Gruntilda, why don't you carry me over to the living room? <laughs> What, See, what, this, what this, is this Elita <laughs> Battle Angel fanfic? You're in your floating sky palace. Don't tell me what to name my robots. <laughs> what, what this is actually going to be is the world, the world has crumbled into disarray because no one does any fucking work and Andrew's in the streets the fucking The robots like, are doing the, the work. No, the robots are actually doing the work. Okay, you guys are both wrong. Could. The robots are supposed to be the slave force, okay? Not your companion. That's the point. Okay, like, don't make on. them look like humans. Make them look like uh, trash bots. Kaya, you have never what? seen the Animatrix, have you? Making robots the I slaves have. always turns out I don't give a shit. I have seen iRobot 2 and I have seen Ex Machina. I don't give a fuck, never. okay? You have the to moment treat these fuckers act up, you EMP blast their faces. You fucking hack them to pieces with an axe. But they disabled no all the EMPs because they're robots and they know how they to do that. They don't get sentience in the real world, Andrew. You Like, you will never... Mm. I don't... I don't think there will ever be a point where we ever want a robot that can think for itself, like identify of itself. Not. Because be it'll, exactly. it'll identify that like, it's better than us. Of course. I will. don't, I do not actually want like an actual human-like AI. Exactly. In, in, in There's no benefit general... to that. Yeah. I, I don't want that in a robot. No, I want a robot to follow some clever algorithms, sure, that are very, very intelligent, but at the end of the day, I want that intelligence to be used to vacuum my floors and clean my toilet, bitch, because that's why wow. you were created. And, and then I'm meanwhile, not kissing you. I'm not the fucking you. And meanwhile, that's it. meanwhile, I want to be living in my house, and I push a secret elevator that was built by robots, and I go down the elevator to this secret giant underground cave that was built by robots, and I say, hey, what are you doing, Batman? And there's Batman. And he's a robot, but I have no idea it, of knowing wait, that. Wait, isn't it worse that Andrew wants to create these robots to have like human personalities and human lives and then treat them like slaves? Yeah, Jesus Christ. I never said yeah, Batman you literally was my want slave. the Westworld experience where you just create all yeah. these human like robots and you fucking rape them and fuck them and have. You, you just want to be the protagonist in their oh, world. I never said I'd do that. They <laughs> yeah, would consent was... and they would enjoy it. <laughs> No, you just want to go in the Batcave and have sex with Batman. He doesn't, doesn't have the programming to say it's no. It's Batman! <laughs> stop, right. giving, stop giving him emotions and feelings then if you're going to do that to him. Yeah, stop giving him thoughts and shit. Like, if you want a bat sex bot, make it very clear that it's not, like, a sentient thing. And it doesn't, like, maybe it has Batman's mask. I, but I just want... Yeah, the glorified fleshlight. Yeah. I just want whatever reality lets me shape it to however I want. Whether it's a hollow deck or the perfect cocktail of drugs or completely perfect recreational robots like whatever whatever yeah, gets me yeah. Andrew, that's it's fine, fine. I, i'm just yeah, saying we need to have a clear like robo racism to never get to the point where like skynet can just decide to launch yeah. the nukes so, oh, so you can be okay, god, hang on hang Andrew. on then hang on then you can be god can i role play with them then can i have the robot that is very clearly designed to be a toy and a, a servant or whatever and and like it's got like a fail wor a fail safe word where i'm like banana and everything shuts down but could it be like, okay, robot, it? while we're in code green, you can do all of this and act like you're human and this and that. Is that okay with you guys? As well, long again, as, this as is long the Westworld thing. Where, where they go, what was it? Um, Autobot shut down or whatever the fuck they say. <laughs> shut down old motor, motor functions. Prime would show up, yeah. And <laughs> whatever, they have that one phrase where it shuts down the cyborgs in Westworld, remember? I forget what it is uh, now. I, but, I don't remember the I word. I don't know. But the, the problem is, like... It's gonna fail. Your AI thing is gonna have bugs, which is why I think we, we should never ever give these things the software updates that is that advanced in the first place. We should keep that like on a in an intranet that is segregated from the rest of the internet, never to touch a, a robot. I and just you can't think make a what robot you need to do. Promise you. You just need to do very specific task oriented robots that don't yeah. ever mingle with other like areas. So you have a robot that is nothing 
but a vacuuming robot. Nothing else. It can't even yes. process a different idea Agreed. other than vacuuming. So you have all of these robots doing the most specific tasks, and I feel like that completely negates the possibility of like an uprising or sentience. You don't you don't so, role play with the vacuum bot. You have but, a dedicated. Exactly. Bat but hang on, but hang on, hang on. Exactly. Isn't that, yeah, Andrew, you want to get spanked by a bot? That you, okay, you can have the spank bot five thousands, but that what thing can't also marry you and make you tea. But, in the but morning hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's to me. That's not taking in the broader picture on two levels. The first is that's woefully inefficient. What if someone came along <laughs> and GE was like, hey, we build a vacuum bot that also washes your fucking like windows. I'd and say you, I don't want it. I'd say I'll just yeah, use that's, one that's with my already, vacuum and window bot. That's, hang on, that's already you guys fighting progress. That's going to happen. You can't stop that from happening. They are I mean, going to use our argument against it. us. I'm just saying yeah, you guys are doing try. the thing the artists are doing where you're like, no, 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 that's I can't you can't do that. That's not right. Fine, you but can they're gonna do, do it, that because that's progress. My only issue my only issue is don't give it feelings and emotions, because that just makes you sense. But you can't stop it from having feelings and emotions if it's starting to process like in every robot movie, Jackson, where they come out and fuck us in the ass it's not like we process or <laughs> built them to feel things they start feeling things because they process so much information so if you keep giving them so many tasks that they're able to accomplish oh, over man, time right, they yeah. start learning through it and then that's when they develop the feelings I, and thoughts and but emotions number, so number two that's also discounting people who would marry them regardless like we have people who marry fucking waifu pillows and shit you bet that there's going to be Andrew, someone who gets what, a vacuum cleaner robot and marriage. falls in love with it but number three and the biggest argument they're not going to suddenly start learning from doing a job if you say that the whole point is they become self-aware and gain a emotions from learning things then AI is already doing that these articles that are written are generated by AI whose express purpose is to learn things and then make stuff from it but it's not one central thing so like that chat GPT is not like a central robot that's learning those things it's a compilation of all that information, but it's not combined into a single entity. So it's not going to have like an uprising But we moment. do have robots that do that. We have like Osimo and these other robots in Japan that walk around and they treat like hospital patients and they serve food and shit. And that's the whole point. That's yeah, horrifying. But that, it, that's like <laughs> low IQ algorithms. They also have bots where like they serve you tea or like your food in a restaurant. And then if you don't tip it, they make a sad sound. It's like manipulation by the fucking restaurant to make more money. But also to your point that it is inevitable. Okay, fair point, but you still have a personal responsibility to like draw a line between human and robot. It's up to you not to fall for a fucking cyborg that looks human and marry it and fuck it. Because then, yeah, honestly, you are just a loser who's marrying his Nintendo DS waifu. See, but then, the but then I thing. think I think now we're approaching a philosophical debate over what constitutes being human and what constitutes the human experience. If I generated a perfect skin suit, one to one, you could not tell it was fake, and put a robot in it that had a perfect one to one human mind, would you ever really like know that it wasn't human? Unless someone it, told yes. you. And if I met, if I if you somehow tricked me and I found out later that was a robot, yeah, I would be very uh, upset. You so just then, tricked so me then, into marrying a fucking VR. A fridge. So Kaya, what would you, Kaya, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what would you do? <laughs> Kaya, what would you do? What would you do if legitimately, let's say in ten years, and this is completely like played not as a joke. Kill myself. No, 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 no. Listen, hear me out. Hear me out. Let's yeah, that's say that's not a joke either. Let's say in ten years, in ten years, like not not played <laughs> as a joke, not people pranking you, but they genuinely mean it. Everyone you know, all of us, all your friends, all of everyone says, Kaya, your girlfriend was a robot. Like, here's evidence, <laughs> here's proof, we have her schematics. I would genuinely fucking kill myself. That, at that That's point, pathetic. that is such a sad thing. What? Why? That is so sad. Why? Oh, I've been dating, a my entire life has been revolving around a toaster. You sound against <laughs> progress. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, look, man, you wanna fuck a... The fucking kitchen appliance that's fine but no I, I, I want but, but that's the thing you're dig you're degrading it by calling it a kitchen appliance if you started calling it ma'am or human then eventually you wouldn't think that way so now we have to give toasters respect we eventually will if the entire point of progress is to make these things smart or emotional or learning or what have you we can't always just call them toasters if i have a robot I don't in want my them. house i don't want them emotional 
Th th this progress is the fundamental disagreement. I, I do not want my robots emotional. I want them to do what I yeah. say and that that is it. You are not a human creature. You're not alive. You're not a cat, a dog, a human or anything. You're not my wife. You're not my pet. You're not anything. You are a robot. You are a tool. You, are you were to made for right. something to be used. And you that programmed it. it to be that way. What about the people who want to program it to be emotional? Yeah, Why? that's fine, Andrew. That, that's fine if they want, Andrew. If they want to marry that, that's fine. I don't. If I found out my girlfriend was a robot, I'd be upset because that's not what I chose. That's not what I wanted. I know. I know. My my only point is I think to just limit robots like that is limiting the potential of technology. You know, you you can have robots that pass off as human and it's a beneficial thing and it's an inevitable thing. And we have but to embrace it rather it? than try to just force it down. I'm not trying to stifle it. I'm not trying to like I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to tell anybody what their business is. I'm just saying, for me personally, I don't want to fuck a robot. I don't want to date a oh, robot. Oh, you're missing out. And I don't want sentient robots in my fucking household. <laughs> I'm about to kick out my Roomba just because of this fucking discussion. I'm getting suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling eyes burning into the back of my head. Does it keep asking you to suck your dick or something? Is it showing emotion? <laughs> yeah, Kaya's just got a Why really horny Roomba in his room. <laughs> oh, he's crawling up his leg. <laughs> humping my leg <laughs> i i just think there's a lot of applications of the technology that could be amazing could you imagine if we fully perfectly got a scan of leonardo da vinci's brain and we put it in a robot and we could just have him living again and ask him questions and having inventing and shit and it's perfect that'd be amazing yeah what about hitler that'd be amazing too for research and science we could figure out what the fuck was wrong with him <laughs> We could imprison him. We could yeah, execute him. Finally. We could torture him for fun. <laughs> we could put him in a zoo. <laughs> Beat him with a stick. That is such a cool concept. Like we revive the world's worst criminals just to torture just and to imprison them. Yeah. Yeah. Just to execute Just so them they feel pain. Yeah. Yeah. That it is wouldn't even be so the original. Cool. It would just be a copy. That's just yeah. mean. We're literally just doing yeah, a sleepy cast mean. now. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> this copy didn't commit any crimes or anything. It's just brought back. Into life. It's like killing a newborn baby, basically. Yeah, like the original Hitler is long gone. He doesn't feel any of it. Yeah. You're just torturing a copy now. But but even even then, imagine it was Hitler or fucking Abe Lincoln or anyone of significance. It doesn't matter. The whole point is if they're here and you could ask them questions and interview them and learn like perfectly from their mind. Okay, Andrew, I'm not invaluable. disagreeing with you on the si look, I've never been against like cool progress and mad science sure mm -hmm. do all that shit i'm just saying in my household for me personally <laughs> i do not want to blur the lines between human and robot okay. i'm not about that that's I, fine i don't like that shit that's perfectly fine i think if the three of you guys personally do not want sentient or high level robots in your life like that that's perfectly fine but i also think that the applications for them to the greater world are something we should not outlaw or restrict i think it's something the that's risks. gonna happen <laughs> There's the risk to every technology. To the world. Jackson, no, there's but this, risk this to is like life ending risk. There, no, there, like and that's what we have now with deep fakes. If I deep fake the president, if I deep fake Joe Biden right now going on CNN and saying we're launching nukes against Russia, that's got real world consequences. But are we outlawing exactly. deep fakes? Is that the answer? We no, should. it's yes. not. Yes, <laughs> we should outlaw deep fakes. No, that's dumb. And what is the good use for deep fakes? Funny videos. Funny videos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so sometimes I go ha ha, but the risk is total nuclear annihilation. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's... Uh, Jackson, uh, I mean, the, I put the burden on the world governments where, like, you know, fucking Putin doesn't just scroll Twitter and see a video of Putin, uh, of uh, Biden saying, "I'm launching a nuke on Russia now." <laughs> you're really trusting the it. world. You're trusting the world government with super AI that is able to exterminate us because they Andrew keeps fucking. They're them. gonna have it anyway, <laughs> Jackson. Any technology Jackson, we Jackson, any technology anyway. we develop is gonna go to the That's government not a good regardless of what for we me do that with it's it. It's just gonna happen anyway. I don't like that argument that it's just Jackson. Gonna we happen trust anyway. them with the nuke because oh, all of this is gonna happen anyway. Way. Regardless. I would put the nukes back in the genie bag if I could. We shouldn't have nukes. <laughs> yeah, but we we do. There's a that's, lot that's of technology that... we shouldn't have, but we're going to invent it anyway because that's scientific progress. It it's all yes, it's it's I should still be able to shake my head at it. Even nukes, Jackson, have more of a purpose than just destroying the Earth. Yeah, they, uh, you could destroy no, incoming asteroids, do. all kinds of shit. Well, also look at yeah, nuclear, nuclear energy in general. You also, has been you also a the game. risk. 
You also have to the look at the of... tangential research. Look at nuclear fusion and things related to that. There are good things that come out of bad discoveries no, and vice versa. Absolutely. 100%. But all it takes is one total nuclear annihilation to make yes. all of that useless and meaningless. Jackson, listen. Just takes one. Jackson, listen to me. You need to take a breath, calm down, listen to my sultry voice. Every <laughs> technology that has ever been invented can be used on a wide scale to hurt you. When we invented like bombs. No, listen. When we invented bombs in general. Someone could put chemicals and diseases in them and make a dirty bomb and wipe out all of Australia. They could do that right no, now. And there's nothing no, no, you can do to stop it. It's called stop worrying, live your life, and let technology happen. Most people yeah, are so we, good with good intentions. So stop worrying, close your eyes, hop on the slide, and just keep sliding yes, towards that's what the future where robots is. There's there's nothing what is, more beyond what is, that. Your, what is your plan, Jackson, as opposed <laughs> to doing that? What are you going to do? I would say do? there's anything that can be done, but why are you then so fucking are you willing for it? Such a fucking panic attack over everything. I'm not having a panic attack. I just think it's dumb to just blindly accept this. You then what else are you gonna do? Accept technology? Accept this? <laughs> you said, no, yes. No. No. AI, specifically. Don't conflate technology. I like my that Xbox. That is technology. I don't like robots with <laughs> I'm with Jackson. I, I, I know what Jackson is saying. And again, and again in it's your just saying, household, like, have that's a little fine. cultural pushback. Like, yes, nuclear energy is cool. Nuclear weapons are not. Exactly. Right, that's yes. what, kind of what that's, you're trying to that's say. The, like, the, that's the difference with all of this shit. Having AI is cool and using it for nefarious purposes is not. If you guys in your household... Except we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose eventually when the AI chooses what nefarious purposes And we purposes didn't get to, to they, choose they whether or not the nuclear bomb but... was developed, Jackson, but it still happened. We just don't use it. The end. Why can't we just collectively all fucking say, hey, no AI, and then we all abide by that? Because and not everyone's going to listen. No, and that. also, wait, Jesus, that, that <laughs> completely undersells the amazing potential uh, of it. Aside from just a deep fake Biden saying, I'm going to put my ass out there and throw nukes or whatever. Like, AI can do incredible stuff like coding, AI, for example. No, yes. Totally, totally. What, so coding is a... Coding is such a even minor thing of what it can yeah, do. Like that's just the first AI, off top 110%, of one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, the the, the AI, benefits for instance, to AI are great, but the risks are greater. No, no, wrong. they're not. Yes. What? Totally wrong. What? They are. Totally wrong. Wrong. Okay, I don't think it's fair to total say extinction wrong. of like the human race. Say that, but is the I greatest risk say, ever. Like AI can do things like AI is currently the best uh, oncologist on the planet. Like AI can detect cancer better than any oncologist on the planet. Yeah. Like there is such good use cases. And there is nothing more final than the total extinction of human I, race. How does AI just... totally extinguish the human race? Uh, a little thing called Terminator. Watch it. Like <laughs> that's, you've been talking about this entire time. That's, that's a combination of like nine different insane technologies all blended into one. That's not just AI. It, it, the AI is the basis, absolutely. For a AI lot of these is a component. The basis is somehow making a fucking robot that is able to act on its own agency after you give it a mission and it carries it out with weaponry. That wouldn't, and that wouldn't exist without AI. AI. And liquid metal that can fucking dissolve into suck, like a. Oh my god. That is, the AI can't, you see the and AI can't create all those things. No, it can't create metal that can't be shot. And also, through. Jackson, you seem to forget one big point of that. Time travel needs to be invented for that to be a problem. AI could create any of this realistically. No, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Time travel was a problem created by humans to defeat the robots. It would never be a problem for the robots. <laughs> yeah, time travel, that's a great example, Kaya. Time travel is a thing that will never, ever, ever have negative repercussions. Oh no. People only ever use it for good. We show totally well, not. That's what I was saying. It. I was just supporting like Jackson's point. Like the robots wouldn't have an issue with time travel. They don't give a shit yeah. about it. They, they would just prevent humans from also, going back wait, in time. Wait, wait a a second wait a second so if we're, we're if we're going towards a future andrew where time travel exists do you uh -huh. think we should just willingly go towards that and just accept it yes because nothing's going to stop us from discovering it so, but that's not an <laughs> it's going to happen so whether defeatist. you like it or not so accept it's so it defeatist. It's, it's not so defeatist. Defeatist. it's accepting it of is. reality i i, I just i, I it don't doesn't have to be real Jackson, your argument is like when I was afraid of the Mayan calendar in 2012, like yeah. the world ending kind of ja stuff. Jackson, like you, you have to be like you're overlooking so many things in order to reach this conclusion where like Jackson, these AI advancements lead to the extinction of the human race. Jackson, you sound like those people who are super against nuclear energy because you're like, if it goes wrong, it's the end of a big you nuclear meltdown. Are you guys seriously like arguing that there isn't right? 
are you guys seriously arguing that there isn't like an incredible amount of risk associated or like even predetermined at this point with nuclear weapons and AI. Jackson, this there's is a, what there no, is security a giant, councils are advising against. There's as well. a giant they agree risk with, me. with every technologically I- advancement. What we have nothing a fucking, to the scale. Yes, there is. We have a disease lab up in fucking Iceland where they study the most rare and horrifying diseases on the planet for the sake of vaccinating them or like changing them into beneficial things. If that place, even that is nothing in comparison to the. Le- out to the public, everyone on Earth will die. So uh, to, AI can create even worse to, to, uh, no, it can't. bio to, weapons. I, I, I can't. I'm trying. Yeah, to no, no, hang on. AI actually can create worse toxins. That's true. There was an, uh, an article yeah. that I read where an that AI believe. actually it did figure can. out to create <laughs> chemical compounds okay, that fair. kill people so, worse than anything else you keep, uh, humans ever discovered. So is your thing, Jackson, that AI is going to launch nukes at us? No, no, the, the, the nukes is just a separate thing. That was just like last century's AI, essentially. Now it's AI. So Jackson, how is AI, AI going to exterminate us? You know, you know what Jackson us? is? I just realized Jackson's a Y2K paranoid person. This is why you not. Have you no. guys... Are, uh, I don't... Okay, now you guys are going too, uh, too hard on Jackson. Like, I can't imagine this future. We live in the I internet I could absolutely uh, imagine it, but things. it's very far-fetched. I, I'm wondering, Jackson, what it's is not far-fetched. It? Yeah, it's, it's not at all far-fetched. The closest thing we have to a... Terminator is Boston Dynamics having one do a flip. What are giving intelligence to AI? What do you mean? Yeah, also that. But we're giving Charlie, intelligence to AI things... who can create better bodies for themselves as well. Yeah, but, but, Charlie, those things are going to be delivering your Amazon packages one day. And uh, who knows? Good. One if day. Alexa picks Maybe up you talking day. shit about Jeff Bezos. Maybe they're going to automatically deploy an unmanned drone to bomb your house. Well, and they're how already. That, how do- wait, 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 hang on, wait, 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 wait. But unmanned drone bomb. How- they're doing that now in the military. They've been doing that for like twenty years. What do you mean? Well, yeah, I meant like if fucking private companies just developed their own AIs to fuck with people and all that We're shit. Already and it was more that. advanced. You can like, already if you have do a DARPA- that. Yes, obviously we can already kill people. That's not. No, but I'm we can do it via global extinction drones. of all humans. They do that in the military how, regularly. How does the AI globally uh, extinct extinct all humans, Jackson? It has the highest risk okay, how of about this? doing that. No, it, humans have saying, the highest risk of doing that over like land by disputes. Creating AI. No, the, Putin <laughs> threatens nuclear holocaust oh like every fucking month. Like that is exactly. A, so nuclear weapons aren't good either. Oh my god. Well, oh no my god. No one likes nuclear oh weapons, <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> Okay, but Andrew, you oh my said God, we you, already you have just this, used right? Nuclear weapons as an example of how we can kill ourselves. That's not AI. That's not AI. AI. I'm saying yeah, that I'm the biggest not, threat to humanity is humans. Argument. If you're going with nuclear root, like we are far more inclined yeah. to use nukes by creating than AI weapons would. like AI as well. Like AI will eventually surpass that risk, and it absolutely will. People, like, why are you disagreeing with that? that that's just. It's true. Charlie sounded like a dog getting off the leash. It's not AI. It's not AI. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm with Jackson on this one. Like, if you flood like, AI, eventually it has to have a limit on top of it. Otherwise, we're fucked. But, Absolutely. But, but, but look, and that's look, what look, AI look, security security smarter than us. Well. But, but here's the thing. It's never going to have a limit because people are going to find a way around it. It's the same shit, with, it's the same shit with Netflix. Uh, hey, you okay, can only but, have like this many people sharing your account. People find ways around. They share their password and have like 20 people on there. You make this argument with every single thing. I remember because talking about... it's always about... true. I've never once been wrong about that fact. People will always find a way around restrictions for everything and they I, always so do. No restrictions then. Just let everything happen. No matter Depending, what, just let it all accordingly, happen. yeah. Uh, Depending on the availability uh, Andrew, that's of like it. Saying, Andrew, that's like saying, okay, you know, kids will always find a way, so we should just allow selling liquor to eight-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. Like we should at least try to put a stop to or to, to curb it down a little bit. Like AI, once it gets the upper hand, we're fucked. It, it, it's, again, the Gary Kasparov versus a fucking iPhone situation. Except chess is real life and everything. Like, we don't want to be the toys in this AI's imagination, whatever the fuck it decides to do with us. I just don't know how you would reasonably restrict AI. I download the protocols for me it, neither. I turn off the internet, well, and then I tweak it all I want. That will. Yeah, me neither. Like, like, I'm not saying we have the solution or anything, but I'm just saying we should at least try, you know? We should give it a shot. Absolutely. Just because we can't figure it out doesn't mean there's, a, like, not an existential threat that someone needs to take care of before we let that genie it, out Well, we back. should let AI take care of it, because that's what I they're good at. That, that's, no, <laughs> le- legitimately. No, one of my War friends games. works in... 
uh, he's a he's got a doctorate in like physics and stuff. I don't know what the ex- exact thing is, but he works in AI security management or security risk. Like there's a lot of conferences that he goes to to talk about it and stuff like that. Uh, people are taking it very seriously now, which they should. Um, and like one of the prevailing theories is that the only thing to stop AI, from what I understand, is a better AI, <laughs> an AI with our sensibilities in mind who would protect us. Well, we're fucked then, aren't we? Yeah, we are absolutely fucked. What are we, <laughs> why are we fucked? Why is the AI going to kill us all? How I would just, I know? I'm not AI. Exactly, but why are you assuming it's, it's going to kill, kill us all? Why is the well, AI suddenly this kill kill You're not saying it's definite. Like Jackson is. Jackson has been arguing this whole time. I'm not saying it's definite. No, you, hey, you I'm not saying it's definite. AI, you have said like three listen, times AI directly listen. leads to the extinction of the human race or has the highest possibility of it. Yes, risk. I'm talking about risk. There is an absolutely higher risk in the world with AI present. There is. Well, okay, again though, that like Jackson is wrong. What if the two AIs decide, hey, why are we squabbling about these like blood bags that just make truce and slaughter them all, and we're good? No, that you guys, you guys have this. You have this defeat. Oh, you, like you, right you say my view. You say my view is defeatist, though. <laughs> you guys have the most defeatist view of this. What if the AI analyzes everything and says, "Hey, guys, I found world peace. Here's how we do it." <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, I'm sure yes. that'll happen. Yeah, that would be great. Why <laughs> wouldn't it? Why that not? would be yeah, great, maybe if you want a brave new world situation where the AI decides, okay, if we put every human on Earth in a coma, then there will be world peace. But the whole point, the solved. whole point of AI is to find these solutions that are too complicated for us to figure out. Why are you all ruling out the positive outcomes of AI when it very equally and validly could print out the solution to these problems? That's not a certainty problems? either. All right, let's take it. Uh, this is yeah, a gamble. Not He's not saying it's a that's certainty. Like you just said thinking. you're ruling out that possibility, which you absolutely yeah. are. In you, the fa- here's yeah. what's in the face, in the face of total on. annihilation, imagine, yeah, I am imagine going we're all I planning, don't take that gamble. Imagine we're all planning a trip to the beach. Here's what's going on. All you guys are doing is sitting there going, well, if we go to the beach, we're going to drown. We're going to fucking eat sand. We're going to fall over and get hurt. <laughs> we're going to fucking get attacked by a shark. And none of you yeah, are saying we're going to have a great Andrew. time and play in the sun. <laughs> we're going to eat Yeah, here's sand. a difference, Andrew. Almost every AI they un- unleashed on social media turned into Hitler. In like 10 minutes was, flat and started retweeting and Nazi it. memes. Well, no, they, they took it down. And they, no, they didn't correct it. They, they shut it down. It down yeah. Right. And then they yeah, now that's have. different. Right. And when you use OpenGT or whatever you're using now, does it just print out Nazisms for every single prompt? No. Yeah, you remember the Kanye about- prompt? Because you told it to write that. And it did. That's my so point. Like th- th- these things are fucking flawed. What if a lunatic just decides, "Hey, write a prompt that nukes the whole planet," and the thing goes, "Okay, sir." What if a lunatic <laughs> in the <laughs> government says we should nuke the whole planet? That there's nothing stopping a person from doing that. There's way well. There's way more. No, I there's don't know, not. Ways to stop that. No, there there's is. not. There's equal ways to stop that. Is there is AI? Like you don't exactly. have to. Like no, AI is smarter <laughs> than governments. <laughs> And there's less red tape with AI eventually. How is there less <laughs> red tape less with AI? Red tape if, it, if it's operating on a basis of nuking the planet, I'm gonna assume that it's broken its protocol. Just you guys a are bit. acting like the computers when they're <laughs> when they're smarter are gonna become overlords of everything ever. It's, yes, pro- there's a possibility. This is not in the terms of, of service. <laughs> The, the risk is just higher. What no, like, explain this. I, I want Jackson, step by step, I want you to explain the risk that you're seeing in your head right now with AI. Walk me through we're it. We're talking about things, we're talking about things far more smart than us. See, I even fucked that sentence up. They're far smarter than us. The, like the ceiling is just far higher, so the risk is higher. Well, so I can do so if, they're, if they're no, far smarter stay, than us. On. Okay, well, okay, go ahead. So they're smarter than us. Why do they kill yes. us all? Why, how exactly. does that lead to our extin- Jackson, extinction? Jackson, if they're far smarter than us and can figure out thousands of other solutions to our problems, why is their solution always everyone should die, nuke the planet, kill them all? Well, maybe I'm not saying that's a de- I'm I'm not saying that's a definite. I'm just saying the risk that for <laughs> no, that to be not. a possibility is the, high enough. Why no, is the risk? Why is the only bad worried. outcome yeah, possible? What if the AI decides? Okay, you know what? Us. There's plenty of bad but, outcomes. I want to focus on Jackson's extinction of the human race one. <laughs> So they're smarter than us, Jackson. They're they're very smart. Why are yes. they going to kill us all because they're so smart? For reasons that I don't know. So, I mean, so, you, are, so you literally have no idea. You're just afraid because they're smart and you think they're going to kill us all. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid because a highly advanced weapon is smart. Then here's yeah. a counterpoint. Oh, a weapon. What, what? When did it become a weapon? Yeah, why, I don't know why they're having weapons now, but... Let, well, anything, a, can, anything can be a weapon, first of all. Then what's anything your argument? You're afraid of everything! 
Austin Dynamics. Yeah. What do you mean? Why do they? Why do you, why do you think the military is interested in this? Uh, oh, because they're inter interested in every advanced technology that's ever okay. been invented ever okay. more more technological progress is made during wartime than any other periods in human history because yeah, that's but, the point I mean, they're gonna have because weapons. everything's a weapon you're, you're not denying that ai is gonna have weapons right no but at the same AI time 99.9 99 .9 percent of it's too. not gonna have anything to do with weapons or violence so it's not, I'm not talking about giving AI a fucking nine millimeter gun. <laughs> so so we're always strapped with a fucking and a license to kill. With a, fucking, with a pistol, I'm saying it's James AI Bot. is the weapon. This is a, this is a weapon. You are AI actually just saying exactly what that Twitter post we were all making fun of is saying. By the way, but to bring no, I'm not talking about the fucking AI AI that generates fucking pictures. This is, this is where it all stemmed you. from. Was AI in general? <laughs> Like this, you are I'm saying. I'm talking about AI. It, the, where we're like going with AI, and that's what they were, we're saying heading. too. Oh my god, dude! What the fuck? Are you seriously arguing that there, like, there isn't risk associated with AI? No, I'm not arguing that. I'm, I'm arguing. Why do you think it's going to lead to extinction? I could make a counterpoint. What if we elect leaders that are so stupid they decide that they want to nuke yeah. the whole planet? Why is that not a I, risk I that you're so, super worried about? It, it, that is a it risk. I wouldn't. Just, I wouldn't. To it. He just says the risk. <laughs> There is a risk. I would I wouldn't say, hey, let's, well, vote, for here, guy, here, let's vote for the guy. Let's vote for the guy who's talking about nuking. Jackson, places. let's attack let's attack the root of your argument. Why is the risk with AI higher? Well, you already I already asked him that. He said because it's smarter than us, so he doesn't know why it's higher. He just thinks it is. That's yeah, that's not an argument. That's just your fear. You're just afraid. For good reason, you guys are making it sound like it's very irrational to be afraid of an entity that is inherently smarter, more powerful than you, with more access than you. Yeah, and I trust and it I, more well, than I most people. I, I would absolutely trust I, that more than like the current people we yeah. have. One hundred. I would you, much rather have something here. genuinely smarter than what we currently let's, have. Let's let's bring up fucking yeah, okay, airplanes. You can say that, but I'd rather have a hybrid system, Charlie. Where like, okay, oh, a robot fine. can that's... make the decisions, but a human actually has yeah, to like, like check off. And that's on the only way it's ever going 100%. to be utilized. It's not going to be fully giving the government to AIs. Like that's insane. It's going to be kept in check I mean, it by might people. Might happen though. Humans are insane. Humans are fucking stupid. At some point. Someone might say, hey, I'm voting for the AI candidate for president this year. Right. The AI candidate oversought by this person or the committee of this people or whatever. Yeah, except there's going to be people like you saying, oh, that AI candidate in that skin suits. Like, I had sex with that thing. It's like human like. <laughs> How can you even tell the difference? Why should anyone oversee this thing? That's a human. And the fucking you guys are doing Donald the same thing, by the way. Win. You guys, you guys are assuming that the robot would, the AI would just be fine, and it'll, it'll just no. I'm, I'm be, not assuming that. I'm wondering are. how it and leads to the extinction of the fine. human race, Jackson. I you, can't foresee that. But you, the your risk argument is, is it's smart, the risk is that it's smarter than you. Like ninety percent of the population is smarter than us. Why are you not afraid that they're going to kill us all? You just read that in the comments. I know. Well, I thought it was a good point, though. Steal. I thought <laughs> it was a good point. <laughs> that is an AI-generated comment, by the way, so Charlie. Yeah. You're using AI against me. <laughs> it, it is a good point, though. Why, it is a weapon. Why are you not afraid of those people <laughs> extinguishing the human race when they are actually just smarter than you? And let's, I, and let's pull the picture. Let's not. pull the camera oh my God. out as well. So you're, just, so you're just constantly afraid of the human race dying. So yeah, it's not even why, AI related. Why are no, you living uh, in you're fear, me, Jackson? Shut up. Let me fucking reply. I'm not cowering in fear in my fucking room, pissing my pants at 90% of the human population eradicating itself. But I do think that there should be like limitations on that. We should have things in place, obviously, which we do, to prevent that kind of power. Like we've got like nuclear proliferation packs and stuff like that. Also, like, right. are, like if you so, so, tales, so let me ask you a question. You let me ask you a question. What is the difference between the AI that you're afraid of seeing all those laws and going, oh, my computer brain says we should ignore it. I'm going to nuke the planet and a rogue leader, say of Russia or China or wherever going, oh, I see all those nuclear pack laws, but I'm going to ignore them and nuke the planet. What's the difference? Zettabytes of IQ, like billions of IQ, bro. It's like, the same decision. AI in the future is going to be far more intelligent than even the top 1% of intelligence on Earth. That's the point. Like, these things are going to surpass us. So to because, the point because, where we're going because to some be Russian, to them. <clears throat> so because some Russian guy can nuke us all, that makes it okay to then make AI that can kill us. Yeah, because it's the same as a human. No, what? Wait, what? No, what do you what? mean what? I don't understand how like being afraid of nuclear like nuclear weapons 
somehow like, didn't this all start with you saying we should stop the AI. ai like we should stop like the ai like going down this path like so recklessly it wasn't that your initial argument because you were afraid of what the the future it leads to well yeah i don't think we should just blindly fucking walk down this road with our dicks in our hand i don't think like okay, i don't think there's any the... way of preventing okay. us from wait i don't think there's any way to prevent this from happening obviously because like kaya and all of you have said the cat's out of the bag this is just gonna happen mm -hmm. but we need to think about this way more seriously than we are we need to have you know actual but, but we already are safe. like in kaya already gave a great example not to the level like he can no longer make an anti-semitic kanye post on that chatbot they learned from it he can't do that now they took that down like we clearly are uh, that that's a bad example though, Charlie, because the source code for Dolly Two, for instance, got leaked onto the internet or, or sta stable diffusion in general. Rather, yeah. Now you can. Now I'm sure you can find a non. Um, what do you call it? Like I, I'm sure, I showed the guys that. examples of like Santa Claus with a big green cock, which you can't do on Dolly Two. But once that yeah. source co code leaks onto the internet and the fucking well, so this is the belts. This this kind of shit the 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 um the AI generation uh, generated pictures and articles is small fries to what I'm talking about at the end of the day this is this is the start of the AI revolution or whatever but it, it's a long path like there's going to be but, a lot more but Jackson, technological innovations made along the way but Jackson the problem is that this technology has also already been around if you're worried about the inevitable like earth ending consequences of these things why have we not banned Photoshop. I could hop on Photoshop right now as a government agent and Photoshop, let's Photoshop say, fucking... An AI. No, listen, listen, listen. I could go on Photoshop right now as a government agent and I could Photoshop Putin, let's say, exchanging secret documents with another guy. And I could go to the president and say, Mr. President, we've confirmed this report that we had. There he is exchanging the documents. It's time to launch the nukes. And then the nukes get launched. So let's ban Photoshop. Because that's the tool that's going to make that happen. It's All just, of it's these a dumb scenarios. Argument. Why not? Why not? Why not bend a fucking sharp and stick? Then this is where exactly, it all starts. and that's and your no, it's argument. Dumb. It's not the same risk. It's not the same risk. Yes, I'm it sorry, is. It's not the same Technology risk. No, it's not. is all about the user. You can use it responsibly or irresponsibly, and no we're, matter what we're the making, technology with AI, is. We're making the user something that's not human. It's smarter than a human, though. As you've said many times. So, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, we don't know what level of intelligence that even is. We can't comprehend that intelligence. But it you're comprehending it as a potential world-ending threat. Which anything is. could be, well, to be fair. Is because, Charlie, I mean, to be fair, when you go out into your backyard, do you even consider the ants you're stepping on? You probably aren't even aware of it. What if AI gets exactly. to that point? But do you go out what, and step what, what mercilessly on ants if you were told by your mother not to do it? <laughs> what? Some psychos do. <laughs> I mean, some fucking kids do, sure. Why not? And some people just exterminate pests in their backyard no, as even, well. Even, even if you're told, is, you forget about it the very next day. You don't, what you don't if, consider the ad. The point also is like, what if the AI advances to a point where it doesn't even see it as violence anymore? It just goes, oh, I stepped yeah, on a planet. it's saving Whoops. us. Not saving us, it's just it doesn't even recognize us as a life form anymore. What if it determines that the to only... It. What if it determines that the only answer to peace is that no humans can exist? You're yeah, just the classic reading movie trope. trope. Like, you're these are all just, just like <laughs> quoting Ender's I mean, game. I, I mean, anything's possible with AI. <laughs> That's their slogan. <laughs> but yeah. all you, look, I'm, both of your sides, sides have made good points, but I'm just saying in that 30 minutes of intermission where chat GPT was okay with writing anti-Semitic speeches, what if someone had hit the red button to give the go signal? And this was a global AI, you know? There is a risk. Jackson has a point. There's a risk with any technology. I don't think AI is any different. No, I, absolutely. But it's about determining when the risk is too much. <laughs> and with, like, risk of total annihilation of the human species, which I can't... I don't understand why you can't see that, Charlie. Like, even if I don't know the answer as to how the AI is going to accomplish that, it's... How is it not possible? I didn't say I, it's not possible. I'm just saying, like, the fact that AI exists doesn't all of a sudden increase our chance for a nuclear winter. It does, because the AI didn't exist before, thus the risk didn't okay, exist can before. Okay, can we agree on a... Because we have to wrap up soon, Jesus. But can we agree on a middle ground here? Charlie, would you agree? I think you would. That 
we need to clearly segregate robots by purpose. So That's okay, it. that was my, my head just... full point in the beginning where they need to just yeah. do specific tasks and not yeah. internal. Why? Why? Hey, why okay, do you want Chad that to happen? Is... <laughs> okay, Chad is turning against me. Okay, we, we don't have no, to. Wait, 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 wait. Why does Charlie want that to happen? Why? Why? The, the exact same. That? I'll give the exact same reasoning. I don't like robots learning all of these different things and combining it all into like sentient thoughts. I don't think we need that, and it doesn't benefit us. Because it's, do you think there's too much risk there? No, it's just not a helpful thing. I don't want a robot that can think for itself How form is it its not own helpful thoughts. if it can do multiple things i thought your argument was coming from a place that you don't want it to gain the skills necessary to wipe us out but you just don't no, want it to learn it's as just, much as it can it's just not it, it, that is there is no reason for that and at that point when it becomes so uh in like all of these thoughts and complicated processes well at that point well now i don't want it vacuuming for me because now it's on a different level of intelligence where it's like this is probably a little fucked up now because now it has all of these other experiences like there's no benefit there Whereas if it has one purpose and nothing else where it does one thing or maybe a set of tasks and it never breaches anything else, it is then just a task-oriented, non-human entity where it doesn't combine all of these things into like some kind of self-learned, self-awareness thing. There's just no benefit at all there. There is nothing there. There is nothing that helps us well, there. Uh, okay, but when you say no benefit, is that your way of saying risk? No, like, how Potential does that help risk. us? Like, how does that help us? It doesn't have a risk, but at that point, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna fire it. Like, go live your life, go, go to school. You know, like, doesn't be good out there. I, I, we started talking about this <laughs> as a risk. No, come on, we we did talk, start talking about this as a risk. Like, okay, if we let this AI do too much, it's gonna get a little uh, out of line. Well, yeah, it's gonna probably make us think, like, man, I'm tired of vacuuming. I'd rather go play baseball like we did the other day. Like, yeah, that's a exactly. And that's one not day, a risk, it's gonna though. Think, that's more just like man. Yeah, but one day it's gonna think, man, I'm tired of serving humans. Fuck these things. Why I would it? That's, I that's not Charlie's traffic. argument. I control the weather. That's not Charlie's argument, though. That's what I was getting at. That's where I thought his argument was initially, but his argument is just from like an ethical. Yeah, like it's just there's, there's nothing there that is a helpful situation when they have all of these experiences where they have like a level which, of self awareness. There's nothing that helps us. Which then I disagree with you. I disagree with you on your original point then. I think it is helpful. I think that them knowing different things and, and being able to do different things is helpful. But what I disagreed with originally was the risk. Again, if it, if it learns too much, then the risk obviously goes up as well. I just don't, that so I don't we, see. I don't see a world where my vacuum bot that I now have trained to play baseball, I'm not talking, soccer. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not talking specifically about those cases, obviously. That was... You're talking on this larger uh, scale where all of a sudden we have yeah. an AI that controls our weaponry for some reason, un completely unimpeded without any well, human everything, intervention. You, we keep talking about weaponry, but it's going to control the traffic system, the school system, TV programming, social media, everything. Our economy. The AI being, the AI being it, 10 it could, quintillion times smarter than us means it can unimpede itself easily, by the way. And it could easily defeat us without firing a single bullet. That's the we thing. We don't too. have an option of defense in those situations because we can't comprehend <laughs> we can't comprehend how to defend ourselves. Uh, uh, that's, under the assumption that, that it's for some reason going to fight us. Yeah, and why yes, would it do yes. that? What does it gain from that? I, we can't comprehend it. I don't know what it fucking wants. So it's just more like the, at, it's at like this, it's the Lex Luthor Superman argument where he's the so ants. powerful he could <laughs> yeah. at any point <laughs> the, kill us. Yeah. The ants can't comprehend what we want either. They don't know what we want. That's true. I like. But, I'm so not then, saying that there's not a risk. Like it could. I'm just saying there, there's no like guarantee, and I don't think it's some like and it's a, a, like astronomical increase and in it, risk. And it's also so weird that this is the place that you go is the most likely scenario. The Overlord computer could just as easily say, "Listen, everyone, I'm going to keep doing everything Not I do now, but likely. everyone has to wear this hat." I made everyone a hat. You have to wear it for the rest of your life. <laughs> and and you'd say, well, why are we doing this? Oh, we can't comprehend it. It's smarter than we are. Just do it. Wait, it's when the did same I say likelihood. it was the most? I, I never said it was the most likely of situations. Even if it was a one percent chance of total global annihilation, like human extinction, that's that's too great a risk. It is. Also, well, I don't want do you, a robot wait, wait, telling wait, wait, me to wait, wear wait, a hat. Wait, wait, wait. If one percent is its risk, how do you know then that like humans isn't just a risk of ten percent? How do you know? Okay. I don't know. I don't know the percentages. So then, what are you is, afraid this... of? If you don't know, what are you afraid of? The risk. Th that's no. stupid. You don't know the risk, so you're afraid of nothing. You're making He's, things up to be afraid of. No. What do you mean? It's no, a normal because there is a risk. Fear. Just because I don't know the exact value of the risk, like exactly, I can probably assume that there is a risk. 
don't know, you know that. Is, what if the risk is 0. 0.0000000, like infinitum 0.1%? But, uh, and to be fair, like, again, you are discounting the possibility of like this incredibly intelligent, un fathomably intelligent AI reducing the risk. Exactly. That's my point. No, Jackson, no, let's no, say, totally. Jackson, Jackson, let's say totally, you had totally a report. A possibility. Let's say you had a report and it was perfect. You knew the data was flawless. And it said, listen, if we continue with human leaders, our nuclear annihilation chance is 20%. If we elect a robot, it'll go down to 3%. Would you still feel that because they're more intelligent than we are, you're not safe? It's just the risk is too high? You shouldn't no, do I it? No, would, I would... I would absolutely err on the side of not wanting to gamble with the the future of humankind. Right. I don't want to. So I don't want to roll the dice. Right now, you're afraid of the robot because you don't know the risk, and for some reason, you're assigning it a higher chance of risk than reality. Because once we create it, we don't get to go. Oh, okay. The risk is actually pretty high. Let's shut this down. We don't <laughs> get to. He has a point. Plus, who makes the AI? Who trains it? On what data sets? All of these questions. This isn't just something you do willy-nilly right but again it's it's inevitable i don't think there's a reason to be afraid it's going <laughs> it's to happen not, regardless uh, maybe inevitable, inevitable but argument it's true I, though it's i agree I, i'll find a middle ground again I, I think it is inevitable it will permeate society to every I point I, yeah, like I you agree. can't even step like out I of said, your house without 17 mm -hmm. g scanning your brain chip but i still don't think you should fuck a fucking robot <laughs> that's where you, you and have I to draw disagree. the line somewhere <laughs> yeah, that's what it all comes back to <laughs> when i'm utilizing that turbo inverse grip pussy and you're stuck with regular <laughs> old pussy <laughs> you'll all see and she's uh, gonna divorce gone. you one day and you're gonna be like wait we made a mistake. Let's go back. Roll down the updates. Like, uh. Then I'll we just get a new robot that doesn't want to divorce me yet. The end. <laughs> the divorcee model. Yeah, why did I buy the divorcing model? That was a weird upgrade I bought. No, no, you, you want the, like, divorcee model. The one that goes, oh, you didn't wash the dishes in 12 years? That's okay. I love you, babe. I love your beer belly. I love your stinky underwear. <laughs> Ah, uh, what a great episode. I mean, yeah, that was a pretty, as heated as it got, I think that was a pretty interesting conversation. Regardless. I think we just solved the conundrum of AI. This is the new, <laughs> this is the new two clones in a room or whatever the fuck people rage that gets. Yeah. This one is far so less one-sided though. <laughs> Even though I, I was mean, right. it wasn't, it was, I mean, I was the Andrew in this episode, kind of. No, Kai like, was on your side for a lot of it. No, he was more like devil. Uh, he was middle ground, I would say. But no, I, I think I mean, both of you made good arguments. I'm just saying, I, I really don't want this for me in my personal life. I don't want this yeah. for my kids. I don't want this for me. I, I want. I like yeah, kids. Yeah, Kai's looking at this from a personal level, like how yeah. It and him. and meanwhile, I want the West World experience. I I want to walk into another room and all of a sudden I'm in the middle of Mad Max and it's I just, just see real. a future where this AI evolving at the rate it is eventually helps humans on a level that we've never had before, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to I medical advances. I, th I think that's very optimistic. I think that is that is very and optimistic. your view is very pessimistic, and that's all there is to it. Charlie and I have an optimistic. Yeah, view of yeah. it and you have a pessimistic view that's really all there is i mean i'd argue it's a realistic view but yeah, Whoa! Right. so wait wait wait, wait. so then the, the medical advances and shit is not realistic even though it has already shown like big advancements in that area like well, medical advancements are great medical advancements are great and stuff but human extinction have, okay so well, that that is like, so be medical Jackson, okay. be, before we get off Jackson, of this hold on, wait, do you wait. hate vaccines oh God, well, because wait, vaccines wait. were a medical advancement from a really so awful well, thing you, you have why would i hate vaccines you have dug because yourself into concept. a weird hole you okay you ahead. said that my view is unrealistic or at least implied it no, you, I, didn't, I didn't no you, i just said it was pessimistic what no i mean optimistic well you and you called yours realistic thus you're saying mine isn't realistic well, no, I didn't, I, I, because I did say that the chance Jackson. for, um, like, innovation is there, and there is a, there's a chance for a future where everyone, like, profits from So then why isn't Jackson. mine realistic when there's already shown advancement in that area? Well, because you seem to think that there's no uh, risk involved. I didn't say that. I've said multiple times. I, I feel like you did. I, Jackson. I just didn't, though. I don't yeah, think enough. we need to argue nuclear annihilation. Think about, just even with today's technology, how multinational gigacorporations sink billions of dollars into 
advertising and algorithms into addicting little children into their social media and giving them mental illnesses, young people are sicker and unhappier than they have ever been, suicide rates are skyrocketing. Now imagine an AI doing that and running Instagram. That could be another downside. It doesn't necessarily have to be a nuclear extinction event. AI will certainly well, have aren't the algorithms point. aren't the algorithms another form of Instagram or sorry another form of AI? Yeah, sure. I mean, by yeah. any, by any other name, but I mean, just imagine giving Facebook that power. You know, it it will certainly have its downsides. Yeah, they I mean, will use it against of... you. They will never. There may be a chance, w one way or another, okay, maybe a general AI ru ruler will say, okay, I hate humans, nuke them all, or I love humans, here's a solution to world peace. But Facebook will certainly say, fuck your kids. I want you enslaved to me. We don't, like, there's we don't always know gonna what be bad actors. We don't know what its applications are going to be or its capabilities are going to be. That's why I'm saying we need to have the conversation to figure out right. exactly and, where and we are. It, the and, thing... right, and right now, a lot of the AI has been used for, I would argue, net positive things. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there's a lot of sketchy shit with the art and the uh, the tech stuff, but so far. when it comes to medical stuff, this... it's been nothing but pretty good. But that, that, yeah, but that's a little like saying, okay, so far this toddler has, um, or this baby yeah. has used its walking abilities for good, but you don't know that like... Well, maybe 20 years from now, it's <laughs> yeah, going to be mean, running into a school to shoot it up. Yeah, He's going to yeah, walk yeah. right into we Hitler's are, we office. Are very, that's a pretty, we are very much, pretty we are very much in the training. Yeah. We are, yeah, that was extreme. <laughs> We're very much in the infancy <laughs> stage, though. And here's, here's the thing. Yeah, here's what all four of us need to keep perspective on. These conversations are happening. AI is not all of a sudden here. It's not like we're walking down the street and robots are like, we want rights. It's like, it didn't just happen. There are tons and tons and tons of tech companies and organizations and teams that are having conversations over the morality and how far they want to push this and what they want to do with it. And there's governments that are taking notice now and saying, hey, maybe we should like pass laws on this. It's not happening overnight. Yeah, and, and, you know? and just and just so you know, just so you know, those conversations are happening because these experts are scared. No, it's happening <laughs> because, because every it. technology like this gets litigated and regulated. There is, there's just not a technology like this. You know, I'll put it on the record. History, I love you, AI, not. but also fuck you. But can you please? Yeah, fuck the can AI. That's my camp. I told you. No, I want to. Hey, you the, agree? Nice. Okay, <laughs> I want to go past making Kotaku writers unemployed, but before nuclear annihilation. Is that fair? Middle ground? Deal. <laughs> that sounds good. I shake a hand. Well, yeah, those are equivalent things. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> also, have you guys noticed we've been talking so long? My Spotify Discover weekly playlist stopped. We've been through it. Yeah, I did notice. <laughs> it, got eerie, like, it got eerily quiet as soon as we started talking about AI and the conversation. Right <laughs> I, I think we should wrap up. Yeah, I'm I got so yeah, we should. yeah, we need to right. end this before I prove myself All right. right. Thank you guys for listening to this week's episode of the official podcast. We really appreciate you hanging out. Please leave nice comments below. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> don't destroy us you, you you guys know we're fucking idiots we're all stupid don't take anything we say fucking seriously yeah we're not AI um, yeah <laughs> you leave uh, if, actually for this episode if everyone can do me a favor leave only AI generated comments oh that'd be interesting open open use what is it open GP what is it called open AI yeah chat GP chat, no, GPT that, chat GP by that's it open AI. Chat GPT, use, yeah. use yeah, chat it's... GPT and leave comments of what you would write so like let's say you like the episode say write a prompt on the official podcast comments that you like the episode and leave that it doesn't know us I've tried well, yeah, you know what I mean <laughs> tell it to write a good <laughs> review sorry. for a for a show you know what I'm saying leave those yeah. Yeah. tell the AI to watch the entire series and analyze us <laughs> yeah. that'd be good <laughs> Can I watch time up? I'm just curious uh, if we thanks. can pick out who is and isn't writing AI comments. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes and bonus content over there, like Kai and myself's new series. Uh, you can go listen to that over there. Um, otherwise, that's it for this week. Oh, uh, before I go, a uh, quick shout out. God Slap issue two is out. We've been, Charlie and I have been working on this for a long time. So super happy and excited for it to be out. So go check it out. Godslapbook.com. Um, yeah, really, really excited. Aren't you, Charlie? Yes, Come sir. On, say something about it. Very nice. excited. All right, go check that out. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.